Masters in their final 11. That's it from us for now. We're going to turn you over uh, to upstairs where you will join uh, Anil Lakhan and Vidya Ramphal uh, for the opening exchanges. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. Spain and Presentation College of San Fernando. It's a much awaited final here at the Briola Cricket Academy. Both teams have performed splendidly to get to this final. San Fernando uh, Presentation, San Fernando, they are the defending champions and they will want to keep the trophy in South. Whereas Fatima College, they will want to take a rest this title from Presentation Co College and take it back to Port of Spain. So, News coming out from the center, Fatima College have won the toss and they are going to take first strike in this intercal final season 2023. So back to you guys. Well, welcome back. And, you know, all of this would not have been possible. 25 years of sponsorship. It started when Omar Khan entered uh, the Real Madrid Power Gen as corporate communications manager. And Omar introduced the cricket there. It's continuing. And now, good news is that a general manager is Hayden Furlong. And he's a man well known uh, for loving his sport, cricket, golf and the like. Um, you must be very happy with what you're seeing here this evening. Uh, certainly. Um, it's a real pleasure for PowerGen to continue to sponsor uh, youth sport in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, we just came out of COVID-19 pandemic, two years uh, without the sport. And so back in January, um, we took that leap to come out of the pavilion. And we were really pleased with the turnout we've had all through the season. I like that. Come out of the pavilion. Um, the, the bigger picture, though, is that you're giving youngsters the opportunity of a platform to further their career? Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, we support holistic development of, of youth, both academics and, and sport. And uh, youth learn so much from sport, uh, not just the competitiveness, not just the uh, how to bowl a yoka or off spin or googly, right? But it really is to take that into their personal life, into their work life later on. Well, you've heard it there from uh, the general manager of Power Gen, uh, Hayden Fulong, and Hayden will be, I'm sure, you're looking forward to enjoy the energy. The energy has been tremendous here this evening. Absolutely. We haven't seen this sort of activity for a long, long while. Just, just the, uh, the energy that you feel and the noise, the support you've had from the fans, um, it has really been fantastic. And I can tell you we have some really talented players on display this evening so I urge everyone uh, stay glued to your television uh, stay glued to what's going on on the field we're going to see something spectacular I can feel it Eleven national, nine national players on that 11 for presentation college uh, so definitely Hayden Fulong has done his research we take a short break when we come back we're just moments away from the action this broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. Welcome back to the Brian Lara Cricket Academy where it is the South the Intercol Finals uh, for Secondary Schools Cricket League sponsored of course by PowerGen just about to begin here. I'm Vidya Ramphal for the commentary. Anil Lacken will join me in just a little bit. He's just finalizing his notes here for the start of this game and uh, what a final it promises to be. Presentation College who have gone 10 games 
uh, make that 11 games unbeaten in this tournament, uh, in various tournaments uh, this year, have uh, made it to the finals. They're up against Fatima College. Uh, Fatima College, uh, the outstanding, one of the outstanding teams in North Trinidad and certainly uh, coming through a very tough semi-final against Presentation uh, College, uh, Shaguanas, uh, to win that semi-final and make it to the final. They won the title a few years ago, beating Naparima College in the finals at the press conference to launch uh, the tournament on Monday. They so they said to Presentation College, we are in a prez slaying mood and certainly we are looking to do the same uh, on Friday. And uh, for Fatima College, they've already beaten one South team in the final, so that augurs fairly well for them uh, in this one. Earlier today, we saw the Western Wolves, the Rio Claro West Secondary School. They defeated uh, the... They defeated um, the Holy Name Convent in the finals and as you can see there uh, one representative of the team is still there that's uh, Michaela Lamorel who uh, played so well in that final great all-round performance for her to win National Anthem of Trinidad and Tobago coming up
Because the father of the lion is the lion. Or the lion will continue to reign free in all of the land. To us, on the power journey, you have provided opportunity where every responsible generation has engaged nationally. 25 years now, and continue.
Let me come back to both finalists, girls to finish the competition. Pulling in Convent and the champion is Rio Claro West. This is me. Thank you. This is me. We have three top boys to look at. We have two teams with a long tradition. In cricket, I think everyone is well aware of that. We have two fat on the leg. As the speaker said, the Lions players, Chelsea. And we have, and we have presentation for the Santa Mando. We really have not stop on so far this season. So I wish you two the very best. We are on top of the game. Keep your confidence, feel your game, enjoy your game. We will enjoy it from the start. Thank you very much. Thank you, young follow and this time you can find your wishes to meet the both teams and ask for the guest. Start with the match. Remember at the start, at the toast, Fatima College won the toast and they decided to take first step. Welcome back, and uh, that was the opening ceremony. And as you can see there, the officials meeting the teams, uh, meeting, of course, uh, Presentation College. Uh, to the right of your picture, there are the umpires, Avinash Ryan, Stephen Lacken, uh, are the two of the umpires there. And the third umpire today is also being met by the uh, officials there. And the third umpire today uh, is, um, let me just give you his name correctly, first of all, is Andel Mahan. There is the Fatima College team and uh, a, a, a curious inversion of uniforms here. Uh, Fatima College, uh, their uniform dominated by the yellow and uh, it is certainly dominated by the yellow and uh, the blue and a presentation college on the other side dominated by the blue and the yellow. Uh, so these two teams meeting up in the finals here. Uh, Presentation College winning the senior championships, uh, winning eight games in a row. And uh, Ali Lacken, who was around then, he uh, certainly did see some of those games. And Presentation College winning that uh, a title quite convincingly, Fatima finishing in third place. So very much a top of the table clash. The two skippers here will certainly play their part in this game. Ali Lacken, uh, this is going to be an interesting contest. Uh, let's start with the Presentation College team, certainly. A team you know well, a lot of weapons there for Prez. Yeah, indeed, a lot of weapons with your, um, all 11 players are quite capable of uh, producing match-winning performances on the day. A lot will depend in, a lot will be dependent on their batting. Their batting has been in sublime form. Their openers, Riyad Mohammed, you know, he's been, he has had a fantastic season. He certainly has had and uh, looked good yesterday in that cameo in the North South Classic. His team South getting uh, were defeated yesterday by North, and uh, that that uh, we mentioned that game also because a lot of the players involved in today's game were in fact involved in that game. And it was a psychological blow struck by North because they were led by the Fatima College captain, uh, uh, Joshua Davis, today. There is the Presentation College team. And uh, I think they're upset about something. They're asking for the picture to be taken quickly. They want to get out there quickly. And uh, Mr. Furlong, Dr. Furlong is to the left of your picture as Ambassador going to the right. And uh, oh yeah, I think I saw what it was. One of the players was actually not in the picture, so they were letting him know you, you're required right now. It's a lovely uh, picture there by Presentation College. And of course, all the officials here present at the Brian Lara Cricket Academy, Academy including uh, Dr. Fulong, Mr. Omar Khan, uh, Mr. Azim Basara, the president of the Cr Trent W Cricket Board and the vice president of uh, Cricket West Indies as well. So that's the presentation college team and uh, Mr. Basarat and the officials of uh, the 
uh, of the secondary schools cricket league and power gen will be heading across to take their pictures now with the fatima college team and certainly this is a great rivalry between these two teams presentation college fatima have been a force for for many years uh, they last won the title beating naparima college at the national cricket center about seven years ago that's their only national intercall title presentation college have never won a national championship in cricket before this year and don't forget two seasons ago they also won the intercall football title for the first time in quite a few decades so we're seeing presentation college uh, their sports program on a high uh, at least returning to its glory days it is indeed returning to its glory days and the cricket the cricket program that i know of has been you know an excellent uh, feeder for uh, trinidad and tobago cricket and uh, they've now making considerable strides uh, by getting into winning uh, championships having won the league uh, presentation college they would start favorites here tonight but as we all know cricket is a game of glorious uncertainties uh, video and the team that turns up on the day and more importantly the team that plays the smarter cricket it's possible that they will become victorious here in this uh, intercall finals here tonight. Well, the both teams are out there just getting ready to do battle. Fatima College have won the toss. They are batting first. And Aditya Ramdeen was one of the those wearing the pads. The other three batters who have padded up uh, all wore black pads. He's the only one with a, a bright blue pads here. I'm not sure if he's going to stand out in the same way with the bat. He certainly looked very good in the semifinals with that 50. Yes, indeed, uh, batted really well, very impressively indeed. And uh, Presentation College uh, having the opportunity to bowl first at, on this surface here at the Brian Cricket Academy. Um, I'm sure the think tank of the Presentation uh, College team, they would have had put in place now their plans in terms of how they're going to approach bowling to both Aditya Ram Ramdin and uh, Fernandez. Yeah, they certainly would. Fernandez, uh, certainly not one of the uh, batters who will get on with it, uh, but Randy is, and uh, he's in many ways, Fernandez, the ideal foil uh, to Aditya Ramdi. He holds, he's very steady, stays, holds up one end well, and allows Ramdi to play freely. The only thing is, is that he doesn't, if Ramdi gets Bob Dahl, he doesn't get on with it. Uh, so that's the other side. He's, he's capable of it, but he, he, he doesn't exactly do that. So in some ways, it's a good opening partnership. In other ways, you tend to feel that maybe Fatima College could go with somebody who uh, gets on with it a bit more at the top. Well, the, the, for the entire season, they've been, they've been a perfect foil in terms of opening the batting. Uh, Fernandez really compliments the likes of Aditya Ramdin. Uh, Aditya Ramdin has a responsibility in the power play overs to be the enforcer. And I'm sure it's not going to be no different here tonight. And it's exciting to see what bowling plans are going to be put in place to try and arrest his scoring in this intercall final. Yeah, certainly it is. Well, for presentation, call it San Fernando. Let's give you the teams. Ramsaran, Jalim, the captain, Mohammed. There are three Mohammeds in the team. Niall Mohammed, Riyad Mohammed, and Kaleem Mohammed. Uh, Brendan Boudou, the under-15 captain, national under-15 captain, led uh, the national team to victory in that gate to wire a win for the Trinidad and Tobago on the 15 team. Rampasad, Ali, Chase, Agard, and Racha. And Racha, if anybody's warmed up properly on the presentation, call it San Fernando team. It's Racha, because after the Wolves won the, their first game, he was the one who we saw on the camera sprinting all over the Brian Law Cricket Academy. I tell you what, he's well warmed up. He is indeed well warmed up. He had a wonderful time in celebration of that victory from the Rio Claro West Secondary School. And I must admit that it has been a splendid victory from the Rio Claro West Secondary School. And I hope that this victory for the Rio Claro West Secondary School really propels not only the, the school itself, but also the community to bigger and brighter things to all these youngsters who are participating in the secondary school's uh, cricket league. So Isaiah Fernandez is out there and uh, he will be opening uh, the batting uh, with Aditya Ramdin, who uh, is uh, one who would, you would feel that has a very good chance of making it to that Trinidad and Tobago under-19 team for the regional series. Uh, presentation College, uh, they will be starting off here. I think it's Egard who's going to be starting off the with the attack uh, from the 
uh, southern end. So Jason Egal is no stranger uh, to youth, youth cricket. Just uh, came back from Antigua where he had an opportunity to be part of a, a program, fast bowling program. And from all reports, he had done an excellent job in terms of developing his uh, skill. I'm a little bit surprised, uh, though, Vidya, that uh, they're starting with Jason Egar with the right-hander on, on strike. And I'll tell you why. Jason Egar's stock delivery is the one that shapes away from the left-hander. And Aditya Ranveen having the kind of season that he has, you would want to, you would want to think that they will want to use their weapon in Jason Egar to try and nick him off very, very early in the piece. Yeah, well, uh, Ramdeen is at the non-striker's end, so he'll be hoping to have a crack at him pretty soon. And uh, certainly he will. Uh, Fernandez to face the first ball from Agard. Number 26 on his back, as you can see there. Quite a healthy crowd in already. People are still coming in uh, for this final. And uh, Presentation College, uh, they, uh, they were given the chance to bowl first here. Obviously, Joshua Davis feeling that the pitch is good enough for his team uh, to get uh, a, a good total here. Here's the first ball. They go for the single immediately. He's been sent back. Wow, that was close. That could have been a run out off the first ball. And it was Ramdin whose call it was. Fernandez trotted down the track immediately and he was sent back. Yeah, so this ball was split out to that backward point region. This uh, Budu streaming uh, there. Another uh, better true video. Well, <laughs> it was close, it, but it was he was aiming from side on. Unless your name is. Uh, Joe Solomon, you're going to hit the stumps from there. Oh, John T. Rhodes. <laughs> well, Joe Solomon famously hit the stumps from there to tie the test back in 1960, West Indies, Australia. That's a bit too wide and is called a wide. So the presentation college team have given up the first runs here. Fatima off the mark with a wide. And, you know, just for a moment, uh, possibly, you know, Fernandez uh, being overawed by the occasion, possibly a bit of nerves there, you know, just wanting to, to get off, you know, uh, and get that single off. Maybe you heard what you said about Jason Agard. He wants to get to the other end. <laughs> Not the case. He's a very brave character and uh, played some great innings this season. Down to leg side. Good purchase here for... Uh, Jason Agar, that one actually got to the keeper just about to waist height. So it tells you that this uh, pitch is uh, pretty hard. I was out there. Uh, it looks uh, dry, not too much moisture. There is a, just uh, maybe to the left of where that ball pitched, there's a patch there that is, there's a huge crack. There's some grass there that hasn't been cut down. And I'm sure that's where he's aiming at. There's Azim Basarat, would have uh, played some cricket in his day. Of course, his career in cricket would have continued as an umpire. Uh, before running the southwest uh, zone and uh, e eventually coming up through the ranks to the TTCB. First runs off the bat here for Fatima College and it is for Fernandez and of course uh, as Ambassador recently appointed as voted in as the vice president of Cricket West Indies. Yes, yeah, so Mr. As Ambassador uh, continuing to climb the ladder at both the Trinidad level and the regional level as well. Vice President of CWI. It's a huge appointment uh, where, he, where, where he stands. A guard, as you can see there, well-built young man, tall and slim. And uh, of course, uh, with that sort of height there, you, you would expect that he can get uh, some steep bounce out of it. Yeah, that's a wide. He hasn't really started impressively here at all. Uh, you know a lot about these uh, players, Anil, and uh, you've worked a bit with uh, Jason Agard. Well, actually, Jason Agard was one of the youngsters who had the opportunity to play a zone of uh, cricket at the tender age of 10. Yeah, 10 years old. That's, uh, uh, well, he wasn't this high, though. <laughs> no, he was very, very tiny indeed. <laughs> but the quality was there. Definitely, we had seen that uh, quality from a very, very early, early stage in his career. DJ Ramdeen, the left-hander on strike. As you said, his stock delivery takes it, shapes it away from the left-hander. But if he's going to get him to play, he has to pitch that up a bit more. Ramdeen's very strong on the leg side and uh, can play the cut shot well. He drove the ball beautifully 
uh, in the semi-finals also. But at this early stage of the innings, with you, I'd really love to see a second slip uh, be placed as well. Give the likes of Jason Igad every opportunity to nick him off. Yeah, of course, for that ball slanting across him and uh, the hint of movement. Better pull him! Straight through him! Poor shot by Randine, trying to pull one that was very full and he's lost his off stump. And the first blow has been struck here by Presentation College. Fatima College are three for one. So a mighty blow from Jason Agard. Going into the pitch, uh, ill-advised pull shot. That ball was definitely too full uh, to execute that pull shot. It was through him before he could have even executed uh, picking up his bat. And Presentation College uh, strikes a huge blow here. Take, getting the rid of the dangerous Aditya uh, Randin. Yeah, that, that's a massive wicket. He got a 50 in the semi-finals and he certainly has been uh, one of the outstanding players for them uh, for the season. Coming into this game, uh, he was the second top scorer in the league. Uh, certainly the top scorer for Fatima College with 138. Only Samir Sarup of St. Mary's College had more runs than him in the competition. But really, what we saw in the semi-finals, he tried to he played a lot of the balls across the line early they were bowling a bit too short to him and it seems that that is the shot he favors uh, to get himself going well uh, you know compliments to the think tank of the presentation college team you know i'm sure they would have looked at heaps of footages and come up with a plan that we're not going to bowl him on leg stump middle and leg we, where he will just take us off we're going to ask him to play outside his comfort zone video which is outside the line of the off stub fourth and fifth stub and let's see how he goes about it. But Jason Yegard, what a wonderful strike indeed from this young man. Yeah, he executed the plan very well, coming over the wicket, the left arm pacer, medium pacer, and getting the wicket. Here's a stat for you of the outside of Samir Sarup, who has the most runs in the competition. Uh, the other, the next three top scorers in the competition are all from Fatima College. Aditya Ramdin, who's just gone, Zachary Siwa, 118 runs, and Joshua Davis on 91. After that, Brendan Phillip of Presentation College with 81 runs. Those are the top five scorers in the competition. So excellent uh, rewards for, the, for that Fatima College. Well, that one crept uh, on the surface. I don't think uh, a snake could have done a better job there because that one just dropped and really didn't get up much. Really tested the keeper, but that's the end of a successful first over here uh, for Jason Agard. At the end of it, a huge body blow struck already. Fatima College at three for one. Yeah, very, very interesting uh, uh, dismissal there by Aditya uh, Ramdeen. Possibly just not picking the length early enough in order to execute that pull shot. It was, it was a tad fuller than he possibly expected. And before he, before he could think about it, he was bowled all over the shop by a very impressive uh, young seamer in Jason Egard. Well, Racha, the uh, under-17 player, we referenced him earlier, uh, his uh, cousin uh, was for Annalisa Racha. She was part of the uh, Rio Claro West team that won the title earlier today and he was uh, he was the chief celebrant he was running all over the place as we mentioned and now he's properly warmed up we know that so here he is uh, ready to steam in once again and I'm sure that given the way he celebrated and how much he enjoyed that boy he's on a high right now for this game indeed he's on a high and having come off an excellent performance in the south uh, uh, north south on the 17 uh, classic Nice lifting delivery, uh, dealt with well there by Fernandez and just a one. So very important here for Fatima College to get a good partnership. Joshua Davis uh, started very slowly on this pitch in the semi-finals. Uh, it seemed that it was wet during the day and he was slipping a lot. And uh, he seemed to maybe have done something to his hamstring, maybe to his calf muscle. And several times the physio had to come on. But tell you what, it was a, a really great innings of 56 uh, in that semi-final. Yeah, very good innings indeed. Yesterday, yesterday, uh, Captain North in that North South Classic, you know, he had uh, uh, that Tom, uh, you know, a child while fielding. So I'm sure that uh, the likes of Aidan Ratcher, they will want to go into the pitch here, go hard lengths to test that top hand, his, uh, his top hand. 
Yeah, that's exactly what. And he's not the tallest of guys. Uh, so anything just short of a good length will be rising into the body. Like that. Oh, and it takes the edge, but just uh, playing with nice soft hands. That one dropped just short of the first slip. No chance of him getting to that. But uh, might uh, have encouraged the captain to Nikhail Jalim just to think a little bit here about that second slip. Well, if not a second slip, definitely uh, a, sh a short gully where the ball now, the pitch is fresh. You know, there is some preparation moisture in that pitch, uh, video. So you'll want to try and extract as much as you can in the early stages. Presentation uh, college supporters are here in their numbers. And uh, as you can see, the crest of uh, Presentation College, some of the supporters from Rio Claro still here with us. Coming down the track, and he smacked that high up into the air. Davis is not running because he knows that's gone all the way for six runs. Massive hit, and what a psychological blow he struck here. He's not afraid of anything Ratcha has for him. Yeah, as a young man, uh, 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 Joshua Davis, he's very, very fearless indeed. And my word, what a way to open the account. Yeah, what a shot indeed. And to think that he's only just come to the crease and faced a couple of balls. He's making a statement here. He is out. He wants to lead his team to victory. And certainly look at that really roused uh, this Fatima College team if it didn't already. They weren't already so aroused. Well, I must admit it's a bold uh, move by the likes of Joshua Davis. Oh, good delivery. Nice response here by Racha. Yes, he tells him, you want to use your feet to me? Puts in a few more kilometers per hour on that ball. Yeah, excellent line and length from Eden Ratcher. They're just touching down on that fourth stump line there. The, the, the corridor of uncertainty. You know, and Joshua Davis, you know, was just felt wanting there with that delivery. Pitching and just shaping a tad away from him. He was just searching for it. Batting just outside of his crease, Joshua Davis. Nicely pushed. He should get the single pretty easily here. Throw comes in. It eludes one fielder, but not the second. And they won't get the extra run here. Fernandez is two off four. Davis, uh, six off, seven off six so far. Fatima College, 11 for one. One more remaining in this first over. So still early days yet in this one. A wicket falling in the first over, six hit in the second over. So we're still even keel at the moment. Yeah, so Joshua Davis trying to get that psychological... Uh, edge over the young and exciting fast bowler from Rio Claro as well in Aiden Ratcher. Uh, takes the edge. That's going to run down to third man. Third man does well to make the stop. And that was a nice sliding stop there by Riyad Mohammed, who I'm sure we'll see with the bat later on. But that's a nice bit of fielding. Yeah, very in enterprising uh, uh, piece of feeling sliding and ensuring that there was a clean pickup, but more importantly, uh, they weren't able uh, to get back for that second run. He re the release of the ball was so quick that there was absolutely no opportunity uh, to grasp that second run. Yeah, and the thing is, he was on the ground. He got up so quickly, he was able to get the ball out of his hand quickly and uh, makes the stop. So, Fatima College losing a wicket in the first over. Aditya Ramdin bowled by Agard, who's going to continue here. Jason Degard certainly with his tail up at the moment. And uh, Will Fatima look to get that? Well, they won't get the second slip in just yet. So the left hand is going to slant it across these two right-handed batters. So immediately we see uh, the skipper of the Presentation College making that bull move and getting that uh, deep mid-wicket in position immediately. And uh, he's getting some uh, chalk on his boots, so to speak, down by the ropes there. Uh, making a few more adjustments here. There, some of the lights and lovely colors out there, taken well by our cameras here on Cricket 360. So, uh, good uh, delivery here to keep him honest at the moment. So, Joshua Davis has set out his wares. He's going he's gonna to take a few chances, but Fernandez, he's not going to do that. He's going to pick up the singles. He gets out there just about a run a ball, but he picks up the singles readily. Well, one of the important things to uh, Fernandez is to continue uh, to deliver in, t in respect to his rule, which is to keep rotation of the strike. Too far down the leg side. It would have been a perfect delivery perhaps for a left-hander. Not that time. 
As for the Fatima batting, uh, their top scorer, Ramdeen gone. Zachary Siwa, who is still to come, he has 118 runs. He's averaging 59 in this competition. Joshua Davis, uh, good average also, 45.5. Niall Mingo and Isaiah Fernandez are the next two top scorers. So those five have produced the goods for Fatima College in this competition. But it's important as well, uh, Vidya, that uh, the likes of Jason Egard and uh, Aidan Ratcher continue to proud wickets. You want to really test the hilt of this Fatima batting. Again down the leg side, second uh, wide in the over, as signaled by umpire Stephen Lakram. So Jason Eger, just a bit wayward, you know. And you're really in a T20 contest. You don't want to be bowling 21 and 22 overs with you. And with the extras, you know, possibly the wides, uh, uh, three or four at the moment. Uh, okay, you just don't want to be bowling more than 20 overs, 20 legi legitimate overs. There's a man under pressure, Nikhail Jalim, the... Uh Captain of Presentation College, San Fernando. He led them very well through the competition, Nikhil Jalim. And uh, eight games out of eight, that is not an easy feat at all to win eight out of eight uh, to take the senior division title. Yeah, very impressive leadership from young Nikhil Jalim. Nikhil Jalim was also part of that South team uh, in the North South Classic yesterday. Unfortunately for him, he didn't get in the final 11. Yeah, I think we're going to have to talk to his coach as to why he didn't play. Who is that, by the way? <laughs> oh, that's a lovely shot, and that's going to run away for four. Nobody's going to catch that today, tomorrow, or ever. That is beautifully hit through the extra cover region uh, for four. Brilliant shot. So Jason Egar just getting a bit straighter there. And Fernandez, you beauty. That was a glorious extra cover drive from Fernandez from the moment it left the bat it had four written all over it and that takes Fatima College to 18 for one in the third over Jason Agard just paying the price He's for out. getting a bit too straight there another nice looking drive this time it's straight to the fielder it's a good throw Trying to catch out uh, Davis at the other end. So presentation, college San Fernando uh, being asked to bowl first. Uh, it has been a decision that they have uh, grown comfortable with. Yes, indeed. They're very comfortable. They have a good a balanced bowling attack. Uh, Jason Egard bowling with a slip, a third man, a backward point, extra cover, cover, extra cover, mid-off. Uh, well, mid-wicket... Feel like coming into that square leg position. Uh, that's Mohammed. He's on uh, the mid on, uh, long on boundary, in fact. Well, one of the Mohammeds at least. So the two guys outside the Titi Azuga, the final leg is on the boundary, and Riyad Mohammed is patrolling the long on position. Straight to the fielder again, and uh, either side, uh, if I had gone maybe a couple meters away from Jalim, that would have run away for four. He hit that very well, and uh, timing the ball beautifully here, Joshua Davis already. Uh, that six is certainly uh, not easily forgotten, and the, the crowd know that, uh, especially the supporters of presentation, he's going to be difficult to dislodge today. Uh, Jason Agard possibly just trying a bit too hard, uh, if you ask me, getting a bit too full. Come down the track, inside edge, that may run away for four, it has. Well, he tried to reproduce that shot that he did, in the, that he got in the last over against Racha. This time, just getting enough of an edge to take it past the leg stump for four. So, fortune favoring the brave on this occasion. Uh, Joshua Davis, his heart would have been in his mouth, having known that that ball had hit the inside edge that could have gone anywhere luckily for him it went past the leg stub and into the fine leg bong tree for four well, those are the uh, presentation college supporters you saw just a moment ago and at the end of three overs Fatima College are 23 for one my, my apology it's Fernandez and yeah that was that uh, was uh, Fernandez he's up to eight now Davis is on 11 
Uh, that that was in fact uh, Davis, uh, Davis who yeah. got the inside edge, trying to repeat the shot from the last over. Aracha is going to continue here, and uh, Racha, the as you mentioned, the from Rio Claro. Uh, a lot is expected of him, I'm sure. Nicely played. Should get one. Well, the, they're thinking about two, but Fernandez has to get back. Well, the umpire turns it down. Stephen Lacram says he was back, but that was very, very close. Turn. That's not uh, the first time that he's tried to go for a run that was not on. Yep. Wicket keeper dives in. Well, that was uh, Davis, of course, dives in and makes his ground. So excellent feeling from the presentation outfit. And some of the young fans here supporting. Uh, those are some fans of Rio Claro. I'm sure they're, they're supporting, of course, uh, Racha, uh, who is from Rio Claro and uh, uh, tall, slim, fast bowler. As uh, you mentioned here, certainly is uh, one of the players who uh, can put Rio Claro once again on the map. Driven nicely over the cover region. One bounce, two bounces away for four. And Davis is starting uh, to show what great form he is. We didn't see him bat yesterday in the North-South Classic. But this time, yes, using his feet slightly again. Lifted over extra cover for a boundary. Well, what Joshua Davis has done really well, he's really, you know, giving the, the presentation skipper, Nikhil Chalim, a lot to think about. Because the man in which he's playing... Uh, they uh, they have the the third man in position, but he is choosing now to go inside out over that extra cover position. So it means to say that the man from Long On he will have to come into the to Tiad circle. So he's really really giving a lot of headaches to Nikhil Jalen because at the moment uh, they have they have definitely been rattled by uh, Joshua Davis' uh, approach. Again, going for an aggressive shot, uh, might... Uh, oh, that was close at the bowler's end. And unable to locate the stumps at the bowler's end. But uh, Fernandez coming down and uh, suddenly sent back there by that one, which went very quickly uh, to that man in that uh, that uh, position just uh, wide of fine leg. Wide fine leg. But it's clear, video that uh, Fatima College, uh, both Joshua Davis and Fernandez, they have a plan, and that plan is to get as much as possible inside this power play overs. They're going to take advantage of these power play overs. That's what they want to do, at least. That's a good bit of running. Very good. Just dropping it in front of him and taking off. And there was never a suggestion that a run out was on there. <laughs> a little bit of by play at the non strikers end. Presentation College and uh, uh, Davis and Company just uh, having a quick word and a little bit of banter being exchanged. But excellent batting from Joshua Davis, the skipper of the Fatima College, uh, using a sublime touch indeed, just breaking his wrist and getting the rotation of the strike. So far, Fernandez has done what he always does nine of ten deliveries, turns over the strike very well. And this time, can't uh, beat uh, the mid-wicket. Uh, Jalim is there. So and uh, was it a question of tactics that he wasn't uh, chosen yesterday for the for the uh, North South Classic? I wouldn't divulge that kind of information in the public domain video. Well, uh, that's why we have you here, you know. You are the coach of the team. But obviously, I, I'm sure you would appreciate a little rest before the big finals today. I know he was... He was certainly uh, keyed up for this, uh, the presentation party, while North was celebrating. I'll tell you what he said in a moment. Oh, that is a good delivery. Some pace on that, some great effort. And that has woken up uh, Fernandez Day immediately. So that's the end of the fourth over. At the end of it, Ratcher has uh, none for 15. Fatima College at 29 for one. So Fatima College uh, winning the toss and batting here in this inter, uh, boys intercall final. Losing uh, Aditya Narayan uh, Ramdin very early. But both Joshua Davis and look at these, look at this wonderful trophy on offer for the winners uh, of tonight's game.
Yeah, and uh, it's a new trophy. There are no names on it. Now remember, the reason for that is that Hillview College won the last trophy three times in a row. Well, when, you get to, when you win it three times in a row, you keep it. Uh, so that time, uh, uh, they were hoping for the four-peat, and they were defeated by Presentation College San Fernando. So that certainly did improve the credentials of Pre Presentation College San Fernando after defeating the three-time champions in, in that uh, very tense semifinal. Chase to continue here. His first ball and uh, Ricardo Chase, well, we did see him in the semifinals. He um, actually got uh, roughly treated in his first over. And then while fielding in the outfield, he got a nasty blow to the chin and uh, the underside of his jaw. It, he was hit so hard uh, because the other fielder coming in towards him didn't see him. And his braces, um, his retainers, I should say, actually flew straight out of his mouth. Uh, but I'm a bit uh, uh, surprised that uh, skipper Nikal Chalem has brought uh, Chase from the pavilion end. And should go on! Why are you surprised when he can take wickets like that? Outside the off-stop, and uh, Davis is gone. He's edged it, and a brilliant catch. And look at the celebration. Yep, they've outthought them. That's what they're saying. It's all about thinking. And Fatima College are 29 for two. So another breakthrough here for uh, Presentation College, getting rid of skipper uh, Joshua Davis. Well, that is a brilliant catch, isn't it? Brilliant, uh, well done. Well, one would have thought that having gotten that psychological edge over uh, Presentation College, <laughs> The skipper Joshua Davis may have taken a more conservative approach going, going into the rest of the innings. But he decided that, you know, he want, he, you know he's going to play the manner in which he started. But what it does, it really does open up this middle and lower order of Fatima College uh, batting lineup with Zachary Siwa coming to bat in over number five. If presentation were to strike another blow anytime soon, this Fatima College batting uh, group will be tested to the hilt here tonight at the Brianna Cricket Academy. Yeah, they certainly will. And uh, Davis, uh, what was instructive about that dismissal is that after he was dismissed, uh, this is, uh, you'll see what happens here. Here's Chase running into him. Now he plays away from his body. They've obviously gone to a plan here. They know that he's going to go for that uh, type of shot. And credit to the keeper, he took that very well, Saif Ali. And a nice diving catch. That may not have carried to first slip. And uh, with, there wasn't, of course, a first slip, but he took it very well. And the celebration tells me that they, that was a, a definite plan they were working on. Yeah, that plan to work that fourth and fifth stump. And I'm still surprised that uh, uh, Chase was given the opportunity from the Pavilion end because he was saying to me yesterday, Coach, that he preferred bulls from the southern end which is to come down rather than to go up. But I'm sure, you know, he's possibly gotten that phobia out of, out of the way. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> great. it's great to see him amongst the wickets here tonight. Yeah, it, it does affect some bowlers. They prefer to bowl from one end rather than the other. Uh, but he has been asked to climb up the hill here. And so far, he's on top of it. Siwa is a dangerous customer and uh, batted very well. He didn't... Uh, look at his fluent best in that semi-final still came out uh, with a very good score in that semi-final uh, but uh, you know a lot about him he he can certainly turn it on well uh, uh, skipper nikal jalen might be we very well tempted to bring back the likes of jason egard for one more one more over and i'll tell you why because the ball shapes away from zachary siwa it has been one of the areas that he has been dismissed on a number of occasions a uh, fumble in the outfield, and uh, there is uh, no chance at the run out there. Uh, Siwa scored at 47 against uh, Kuva in one of their early games. He got 27, uh, 27 against Naparima College in a victory there. And 44 of 29 deliveries against uh, Presentation College Shaguanas uh, in their last game. So Siwa has been playing very well. Well, after these next uh, two balls, uh, we'll have uh, the, the big hitters coming in. Uh, when I say big hitters, I mean big hitters in so many ways. Vinod Mamchan and Ruskin Mark are going to come in. 
and uh, the fast bowler and the batsman, I think. Is it, is it that the way it, it looks to you? It is. It is. Uh, Ruskin Mark, <laughs> as we know, has a reputation of bowling in the 90s. Yeah, Ruskin doesn't only bowl bounces. He can tackle men and, and they land in the crowd after the ball. Outside the off stop, they're appealing for a catch of the wicket here. Ali is convinced there was an edge, but uh, Chase wasn't interested in it. I don't think you ever saw Ruskin play football. <laughs> a little stat here. Ruskin actually won the FA Trophy uh, in Trinidad and won the national cricket title here in Trinidad with, uh, with his team, uh, Paragon. Uh, with uh, Malvin, was it? Uh, FA Trophy with Malvin and uh, Paragon in the National Cricket Championships. Played. They should get one here easily. Second run, however, might not be on. Well, that's the end uh, of a successful over here by Ricardo Chase taking the wicket of uh, Joshua Davis. He was out for 16. Fatima College out to five overs at 31 for two. We'll make a change uh, ourselves up on this side. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited, industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. So welcome back as we continue coverage here of this Intercall Finals. It's really, really busy. They're very busy out there. Uh, I was just uh, having a look at what was happening coming up the steps, Ruskin, and there is a tremendous line with people trying to get into the stadium still. Both car parks to the north of us are filled. Well, uh, it's, I suppose it's indicative of a good evening to you, Vinod, again. I, I think this event, this tournament, and the fact that it's a north-south battle, in a, in a sense, I think has really attracted uh, people's attention. They've really gotten people interested. And what is also uh, of note here, these are the, the youngsters, many of these youngsters are the ones who have been sort of dominant in the league so far this year. <coughs> this is Niall Mohammed punched the way to cover. This presentation call is using a fourth fast bowler here. And I was saying that early on, Ruskin, I asked you the question about batting, whether batting first in that twilight period mm -hmm. um, would have played on the minds of the batsmen. They seem to have gotten through that though. They've lost two wickets. And I think they would probably would have taken that, you know. If you could limit it to just the two just the two wickets, you don't want to lose too many wickets early, then, then you have nothing at the back end. But just look at the, the supporters, you know, they're pretty much packed in a certain parts of the ground. They're really cheering on these youngsters, and that gives you a big lift. You know, when, when you have a crowd in, you, you just feel to do more. In fact, sometimes you do things you don't even know you, you could do because you're just running on adrenaline, and you're getting that from the spectators. Yes, Mohammed. Cutting and cutting well. There is protection down there in the form of Egard. Short and wide, he would be disappointed there that he didn't know much more with that. But he made Fernandez. good contact. Yeah, he made good contact with it and placed it well. It, it was in the air a little bit, but he it was well away from the man at that cover position. Uh, so I don't think he was too worried about that. However, if you probably hit it a little bit earlier, he probably could have hit it through the extra cover region. Well, this is the line I've been speaking yep. about, Roskin, just a, a bit earlier today. And uh, they're trying to get through the turnstiles. Just have a look at the car park. And uh, you can see that's the first car park. It's a beautiful sight. And there goes the second car park it's a as well. great sight to see. And this is for youth cricket. And that, that just says mm -hmm. something. Driving is Siwa. Not getting hold of it. That one jamming it down into the ground. And I mean, you look, you think of him, this, this young man, obviously, he would be under some pressure because, you know, they, he's so heavily dependent on, you know, they look to him to, to not just bail them out of trouble, but to give them 
uh, some kind of impetus. So even if the guys at the back end could come in and just swing the bat, at least he's the one who will set the tone for them. Uh, so there's a lot uh, riding on, on this innings here. That's a lack of pace there on that occasion, playing all over it. Siwa hasn't been in the best of form, but he will be looking to, to get among, amongst the runs here. He has good support. This is the Fatima unit. There's Mr. Patti. Much bigger guy than when I last saw him. <laughs> I think he has grown a bit. But he has probably enjoyed Christmas. <laughs> and Carnival. <laughs> and Easter. <laughs> this could be interesting here. He has to hurry. And uh, not for the first time, uh, they're taking these cheeky little singles and are just uh, beating out the throws. In fact, the throw, nobody has hit the stumps just yet uh, with a direct hit. So two good last overs there by Chase and Mohammed. That's leaking four runs, the last two overs. So I think Chase will continue at this end. He has to be careful though. I don't think Chase is bowling at full throttle. In the North-South Classic day before, he came off after just five balls, I think it was, uh, with a groin strain. So I'm very surprised to see him involved uh, as a bowler in this encounter. Normally, he comes in later on the order and he's a hard-hitting batsman. But I guess when a title is on the line for your school, yeah, you will put your body in the line. Well, it's, it's, I suppose it's, it's the adrenaline again. He's running on adrenaline now. He wants to play in a game like this. And uh, so far, so good for him. He's picked up the crucial wicket uh, of Davis. And uh, I, I suppose he could say everything else now is just gravy for him because he's done his bit already. That's a delivery that is a little bit slower. Pace off of it. This time, uh, they the hit the wicket. I was just complaining that they weren't hitting the stumps. And they did hit it this time. Unfortunately, the batsman was safely in. Uh, but it's, that's, it, it's, that is, there is the potential for a run out here because they, they're taking these little cheeky little singles, but they're not placing the ball well. They're not placing it away from the fuseman. They're hitting it within range of the fuseman and then running. And uh, that could always be a dicey situation because the fieldsman, uh, if he gets a good bounce and the ball just kind of hops up for him, then he doesn't have much to do and he could easily effect a run out. Remember, they almost lost the wicket of the very first ball via the run out route. Fernandez it was who just played the ball and, and sprinted and then had to turn and, and scamper back. Well, there's a change in the field. Deep back was quick. Uh, is now placed on the boundary and uh, deep and wicket comes into the circle so with the pace of chase he's going to force the batsman if he pulls it's going to go backward of square more than likely good delivery this time from him and you notice he's not at full throttle and maybe it's because of that little niggle that he has uh, that he's not prepared to, to really pull the choke just yet uh, so he's bowling well within himself uh, but to his credit he's keeping a good line and, yeah, and he that is, is and that is crucial here. Uh, sometimes when he goes at full throttle, he loses control. So this may be a blessing in disguise for him here tonight. And again, Fernandez is going right across the ball. And uh, we've seen shots like that already tonight. Uh, that really, they, they look like ugly shots. And uh, they just, it's the wrong shot for the type of delivery. And maybe there isn't the kind of bunks that they're anticipating. Uh, in the wicket, look at it again. Again, he took it's a it's an off cutter. You could see him, you know, pulling the finger down at the side of it, and uh, he was through the shot before the ball even got there. But he was over the ball. Again, good line, big single taken. Uh, I, I like the spirit in which the game is being played, though, they, because they know each other very well you know they they probably well of course they're national team teammates uh, some of them they're zonal uh, rivals but they they, they have a, a pretty good understanding and i always tell people this even though you're competing against each other when you play uh, at this level uh, and then beyond that it's like a fraternity you know it's like a yeah. cricket fraternity you, you you basically support you want to see everybody do well you know it, not every day they'll all do well but yeah. you still want to, to cheer them on 
even if you're not there clapping if he hits you for a four or six. Uh, but when you come off the field, you will, you know, you will congratulate him and you shake his hand. Uh, these guys, they have, they have that bond. They have been together since um, the, the, on the 13 days. Mm -hmm. Slow Excellent. delivery, slow delivery, yep. beaten. Another nibble. And he's good spell bowling here. well, yeah, he's bowling really well. He's bowling within himself, you could see that. And, and you're right, he's probably feeling the effects of uh, the groin strain. Uh, but I'll tell you something about groin strains. I had a teammate who had a groin strain. It was so bad. Uh, and this may sound funny, eh? you used to have to warm up to walk. Warm up to walk? You used to have to warm up to walk. <laughs> and I'll explain that to you after this. Can no ball. <laughs> Good work by Egar. They're just attacking that. So it's a no ball. Mm -hmm. Yep, and, and the person in question I was telling you about is, is Varun Skinner. Mm -hmm. And and Varun had the, like, both groins paining him. He couldn't walk. And just to get into the habit of walking. Now, here's the thing with Varun. Varun would tell you he couldn't walk. But he's not missing a game. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Just like how Egard is here. Uh, that's his team. Yes. Yeah. And I, I, if you put him, if you call him from the national team, he's going. You know, he's that, he was that type of person. Down the wicket he comes. And again, we've seen this French cut for a couple of times now, where the inner edge, because the batsmen tend to hit slightly across uh, the line of the ball. And uh, we already saw one man lose his wicket with a, a real cavalier uh, shot early in the, in the game and got bowled neck and crop Ramdeen. And uh, on this occasion, uh, Fernandez just got a, a enough on to, to, to avoid it hitting his stumps. So at the end of that over, they're going to 38 for two. Yeah, so it's 38 for two. We take a short break. We'll be right back. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited, industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. Let's welcome you back here to the Branla Cricket Academy. We're in the middle of the Pogen Secondary School's Intercult Final. Fatima having won the toss and opted to bat first. A 38 for two now after seven overs. And uh, Mohamed again pitching on a pretty good line. A little bit of inward movement from him as well. Uh, just forcing the batsman to have to be respectful. Not much Fernandez could do with that. Yeah, good line, good length. And again, the lack of peace by Mohamed has nothing to work with. So the young man has started well. It's a cross section of the crowd there, intently looking on. I'm surprised we're not seeing Colin Murray in the crowd. A old Fatima boy like him. Colin thinks it hard. He has to warm up to pass <laughs> the lighthouse. <laughs> it's right away. Runs here. Down to cow corner. Dive by Racha. And in one fell swoop, he releases the ball. That's good work there by the big fast bowler. Yes, indeed. And uh, running around the boundary. So he had some work to do. Uh, running to his right. And uh, he got it in his hand. Look at how much work he has. Look how much ground he has to cover here. He did well. He actually backhanded it. And... Uh, grasped it in his left hand in the end and then released it quickly with the right uh, to limit the batsman to just the two runs. A much slower delivery again. And another attempt at uh, the stumps. So they're living dangerously with these quick singles. And uh, so far, so good for them. But uh, you get the impression that their luck could change uh, at any time. It's now 41 for two in the eighth over. And everywhere you look, the crowd is growing. Yeah, the crowd really growing here. It's great to see. Look at that. And this is a school's match. Yeah, it's, it's, so, it's so good. It's really, really good to see for secondary schools players. It really just tells you how much interest there is in the game of cricket still. 
And this time he's going to get a nibble. They might get a second run if they hurry, and they are. And uh, not much Ali could do about that. And uh, the batsmen are able to come back for two leg buys. Uh, speaking of the crowd and what you're seeing out there, Ruskin, just to remind all viewers that coming up in June, you have what will be called, it's a collaboration between KFC Cricket 360 and the Secondary Schools Cricket League. You'll have the KFC Golden Cup. That's a T10 tournament. So you can imagine the crowd support for that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Beaten again is Siwa. Siwa has really struggled since yeah. going out there. Yeah, he hasn't really been able to time the ball very well. Now, as, a, as, a, as somebody who is so heavily dependent, uh, the team is dependent on him, uh, you know, with Davis going, with uh, Ramdeen going, what he probably needs to do now is try to not to be too extravagant and just try to milk the ball in for a while. Just get, uh, you know, get some runs on his belt. Get the ball hit in the middle of the bat. And, uh, you know, forget the horizontal shots for now. And uh, even then, they're going to have to hurry. This could be interesting. And again, they miss. And I tell you what, though, had he struck that, he might have been gone there. Yeah. We'll he see from the replay. Real short. Yep. Yep. Normally, the direct hit gets to them. And uh, the players are going to take a short break for... It's called a strategic timeout. Actually, he might have made it, yep. So, we're up for the strategic timeout, and uh, we are going to take a short break as well. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited, industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, Terrageum and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, terrageum and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, terrageum and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited, industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, terrageum and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited, industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, terrageum and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. And as we're back here getting ready for the resumption of play after the strategic timeout, Fatima College going along okay 44 for two after eight i'm sure they probably would have liked to have been a little further along but they lost those two very important wickets uh, so that might have forced a little 
a check in their approach. Uh, but they're still on course, I would imagine, for a decent score. I would, I would feel if they can get 130, 140, they might feel that they have a chance. If they can get 150 and above, then they might really feel that they're in the, in, in the driver's seat here. I was thinking along the same lines, around 140. Now, no, that's 44 for two after eight. Mm -hmm. 44 for two, 45, up to 50. You lose two wickets overs, in, a, yeah. in a power play. Mm -hmm. is accepted. So... They're just two of us behind in terms of that. But if these two can stay, and Siwa in particular, if he can spend some time out there, he has been struggling, to be honest. Um, but the longer he stays, the easier it's going to become. He's a man who can really take the attack to Presentation College. And here's Kaleem Mohammed, the opener. Now, Kaleem Mohammed bowls these lovely lollipops, but he's very, <laughs> very successful with it. Sometimes when I see Kali Mohammed bowl, I want to go back and play cricket. Um, so let's see what will happen here, Ruskin. I know he's your favorite batsman, yeah. Kali Mohammed, but he has the ball in his hands now. But be careful, you know, we, Ian Wilson thought he was going back and play cricket just recently, and I, I don't think we, we saw only flat lines in the <laughs> scorebook. <laughs> so good line, good line, Kali Mohammed starting with. He said he didn't make any runs with the bat, but I'm not quite sure what he did with the ball either. Well, there was a situation in Tobago when our very own Sid Gray, who actually captained Tobago on the 19 at, at cricket, played in a celebrity match when we covered the, the, the Tobago T10 and bowled one over for 27 runs. He was immediately called back into the commentary booth by <laughs> Michael Rupwa. <laughs> He retired. <laughs> After one over. Imagine being plastered around your own stadium. <laughs> and, the, and these are the pictures of the victorious Rio Claro West outfit. Yeah, congratulations to the girls from Rio Claro. They really had support. Three buses came packed from Rio Claro. And not Maxis. Those long-time PTSC blue buses. All right. And they hold more. <laughs> As I was saying on air, if you wanted to, to just reach across and taste some of the pineapple in Rio Claro, they're famous to that. Today was a good day because I think everyone in Rio Claro was, was out of Rio. Was yeah, they were out of Rio yeah. and at the stadium. So, Mohammed, just two singles so far. Yep. But it's good. It's, it's really good that they can uh, taste success. Yeah, he'll do a lot for the school. Mm -hmm. Now, what Fatima will be looking for here is to put a decent score together because then that 12th man comes into play, which is, of course, scoreboard pressure. Mm -hmm. Moment gets this one to keep very low. And again, you could see the, the pressure that Sewa is under. He's just not... He's not in sync. I'm not quite sure if he's putting too much pressure on himself and he probably just needs to relax and play the ball on merit. Don't, don't worry too much about feeling again. You can see, and, and that is a half volley, you know what I mean? But he's so afraid, you know, he's just kind of digging himself further and further into a hole here. Uh, but that's the end of the over, and at the end of over number nine is 46 for two. Well, he's faced 16 deliveries for his six. Fernandez at the other end, 17. A big blow was when Ramdeen got out. We saw how well he played in the semi-finals. One of the boats, one of the hospitality suites up there. I think that belongs to the Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board. Yeah, it's a, but it was, a, it was such a, an ugly shot. You know, he just kind of planted there and just swung. He didn't really... Uh, he lost sight of the ball. I'm almost certain he lost his shape in trying to make that shot. And uh, he just missed everything. So, press, press captain Nikai Jalim is going to take up the attack. A good first over there by your good friend Kali Mohammed. Yep. Just two runs. Yep, and, and I think he, went, he might earn another over. Here they go again. This could be dangerous here. And I always said a run out was on the cards. And uh, here we go now, and uh, it really was a situation where they were always 
tempting fate with their running between the wickets. And this was a bad miscommunication and uh, uh, Sewag has to go. And that is a big, big blow for Fatima. Yeah, that's a huge blow. Zachary Siwa, so much depended on him. And now he goes, 46 to 3, a great breakthrough by Presentation College. Siwa getting run out. Let's have a look at it again. Just punching it on the offside. It, and Fernandez just didn't see the value in going for that. Now, it was Fernandez called because the ball didn't go behind him. Mm -hmm. And the Siwa came running down the track. So, 46 for three now. Well, Jalim will tell you he did his part to get a wicket there. Uh, but again, but it's, it's careless running because the ball was in full view of the fuseman. Mm -hmm. You know, and we were talking about that. If, the, if he gets a good bounce while he's attacking the ball, then he, he's, it's easy for him. All he has to do is just release the ball. And that's exactly what happened there. He was under no pressure. Watch how easy he was able to pick up the ball and just return it. Right? And uh, as simple as both batsmen at the same end. Uh, so it's, it's, that's the kind of, of, of run out that if Patty was oversized, now you get bigger in a hurry. Because he'd be very upset because that is the one thing you don't want. Well, Mingo is the man in Nile Mingo. And uh, certainly, uh, Jalim is doing a fantastic job here, just keeping it uh, right in front of the batsmen, not giving them much swinging room. Well, the crowd pretty quiet on that end. We see the Fatima crowd, they're not having it all their way here at the moment. Well, feel it there by Khalid Mohammed. Spreads with their tails up. Yep. They've done well. They've tried to keep the pressure on Fatima. Uh, for a moment, Fatima enjoyed uh, some fast scoring, but that has dried up now. That's a good shot. And, uh, the, the thing about that is because he, he wasn't taking any risk playing a shot. He just played it with the tie and not tried to do too much with it. Didn't try to hit it too hard. He just... Uh, played and he played with a straight bat. Too often we saw batsmen trying to go across the line of the ball. Uh, not all of them got out, but they, they might have gotten an inside edge on a couple of occasions uh, because they, they're trying to, to force the issue rather than, you know, as we say, take what the bowler gives you sometimes. Remember, these, uh, her video was talking about the intercult champs. Fatima, the reigning secondary school's football intercult champions, and Prez won it the year before. Yes, so. <laughs> It was and There's the another <laughs> attempt at oh. a quick single, and this time you can't pick it up. Uh. Well, well, well. Well, at the moment, pick that up. It could <laughs> have been interesting. It's the end of the over, the end of 10. The score is 48 for 3. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll be joined by Vidya Ramphal and Annie Laka. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited, industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, Yes, he has Mohammed to continue. Oh, a chance at a stumping there, perhaps. Mohammed felt his knees. He thought he had a wicket. That'll be interesting viewing there. The batsman just reaching for that. And just, uh, that's Mingo. Let's see how it happened here. Ooh, was that foot back in there? No. Yeah, very close shape there for Mingo. Playing on the wrong line is Mingo there. Ball not spinning, just holding its line and going through to the keeper. Keeper unable to to gather. Uh, 
Well, in the last uh, two overs, just four runs coming off it. And that uh, the, the fall of the wicket there, just to reflect on that uh, run out, certainly a huge mix up. Should get a run this time. A good bit of work by Ramsaran in the outfield to effect that run out. But it was always on the cards as uh, Ruskin and Vinod were making the point that it was always going to happen. And we saw that earlier on Austin because there didn't seem to be too much communication between the batters at that time. Yeah, it just seems to be push and run without any kind of uh, communication in terms of, you know, really being assured you know, in trusting each other. And, you know, it didn't surprise me one bit when uh, Zachary Siwa was run out. Well, he's uh, through, through and over, actually, if you believe that. Uh, I thought I was seeing the wrong thing there, but Mohammed is actually coming between the umpire and the stumps and then making a, a sharp turn and bowling over the wicket. This is not something you normally see. Yeah, well, you're seeing it now. Obviously, it's, it's working for him. He's keeping the runs down. <laughs> That's the end of the overall. The same at, after 11. Fatty McCollage in some trouble here at 49 for 3. I'd like to say a special good night to two young, exciting cricketers out of Faisalabad. Uh, Daniel Am and, I one of them? and uh, okay. Stephen Mohammed, uh, both representing Southwest today in the zonal on the 13 tournament, uh, playing against the Southeast team. Unfortunately for Southwest, they went under by 40 runs. And would you believe, Vidya, they had 40 extras? Ooh. Yep, that does happen at uh, the under 13 level. You can see many extras, maybe not that many, but uh, quite a few extras at that level. Challenge continues. And get this, one run in the last over and four in the previous two overs. So the last 19 balls, Fatima College have just gotten five runs. So they really, the wind has gone out of their sails. Well, I must admit, I, I was totally uh, amused by the man in which uh, skipper uh, Joshua Davis was batting. It gave me a, the impression possibly that they had lengthened the batting in terms of their, as a batting unit, giving him the license, you know, to propel himself and be aggressive at the top of the innings. Which would have been... Uh well, they're going to get another single here. That's a bit unusual because when you consider three of their batters have gotten the bulk of the runs for them for the season. After Davis, Davis had 91 runs coming into this game. The next highest scorer was Niall Mengo who had 30 runs. So those three, uh, so giving, yes, you, you want to take some chances at the top. Nice shot. Just going to get him one though. But at the same time, you do want to be reckless as well. Right, and because it, you just have three batsmen, three main batsmen scoring runs. And uh, both uh, Joshua De Silva, Aditya Ramdeen, and the likes of Zachary Siwa. Joshua Davis, yeah, I uh, think, Joshua I think Davis. what you meant, yeah. 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 So here across the line, appeal for a stumping here. Jalim was interested, but uh, that's only after Saif Ali went off celebrating. The umpire has turned it down, though. Let's see if his uh, back foot did come off the ground at all. No, it didn't seem so. And uh, Fernandez, we're talking about the run-out situation. I mean, depending on the where the ball goes, that's whose call it is. I'll we'll develop on that in a moment. Slightly faster. That's played beautifully. This could run away for four. It's racing across the turf and gets there. That's an elegant shot there by Mingo who picks up a boundary, his first. Yeah, a deft touch uh, from Ingo. They're just allowing that ball to come onto him and playing it later as possible and beating the, the third man to his left and it raced into the third man boundary. So a welcome boundary for the Fatima outfit. Mingo getting that boundary. Yeah, that was a nice shot there from Mingo. Give him some confidence. He has seven of 10. Fernandez, nine, 19 of uh, 33. We we're talking about the run-out situation. Actually, the, the, common, the commonality of all three partnerships is he's been in all three partnerships, and there's been a great amount of uncertainty, which is not to suggest that he is the fall. Now, in that last run-out, as soon as he played the ball, he was telling Zachary Siwa to, to wait. However, that was the non-striker's call, wasn't it? Indeed. 
was the non-striker's call. The problem was, I think, for Fernandez is that it went, it didn't, it, just, it didn't go straight to the fielder, but it was close enough for him to, to cause some alarms. That should be one. It got out to the, <laughs> yeah, they're just very skittish about their running here today. Yeah, but uh, so that I, when it goes square of the wicket, it always causes some issues. You have to be very astute with your calling. But Presentation College has really arrested uh, the scoring in this encounter. They're stifling these uh, Fatima batters here now. Not much they can do uh, at this stage of uh, video in terms of... Uh, at this stage, it's more of a rebuilding process rather than trying to, to press the accelerator. So possibly we could see uh, both uh, Fernandez and the likes of Mingo just trying to knock it around possibly for the uh, next two or three overs and maybe try and change gears in the last five hours of this encounter. Yeah, they certainly will need to change some gears at uh, some point in this game. <laughs> that one thrown rather wildly there by Egard. And uh, not giving up the, the overthrow though. 58 for three after 12 and a half overs. They're going along at 4.64. After the first uh, six overs, they were going along at 5.5. That's where the, the highest point of their run rate so far. Well, Mohammed has done a pretty good job here so far. He has bowled 16 deliveries and only given up six runs. Well, I'll tell you what, Vidya, because Fatima College have lost their kingpin of their batting, they are unable to really try, you know, and possibly show some intent against uh, the likes of uh, Kali Mohammed. Well, Mohammed going through and, and over. Now he's going over the wicket. <laughs> he said he's enough of that, uh, that style of bowling. Yeah, more of the same here. He's done well. He's kept down the scoring uh, in his over after three overs. Uh, his spell, none for seven. And Fatima College at the end of the over of 58 for three. Uh, still a lot of work to, uh, to be completed by both sides, uh, Presentation College. They will want to continue to chip away at the wickets. Whereas Fatima College, they will want both Mingo and the likes of Fernandez to really start uh, showing a lot more intent in trying to get them to a score that they believe that they could defend in, tw uh, in this 20 over contest. Well, this Davis, T20 Davis is out there, the captain uh, carrying the water, obviously carrying more than the water. There's a message there somewhere, and I'm sure he's going to tell his guys, to, as you've suggested, to stay out there, uh, pick up three, four runs, if they can get five runs and over uh, for the next uh, couple of overs or so, and then uh, preserve the wickets and then try to push on from then. You bat for another couple of overs, you're going to get your eyes in, and then you're going to be in a position where uh, the marriage of uh, limbs and uh, the eyes and the limbs to get the balls away. So I'm sure uh, 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 Coach uh, Miguel Patti, he will still uh, want to try uh, to get possibly in the range of maybe 125, 130 uh, uh, from this stage. But it's going to take a lot of doing to get to that total. Rampasad into the attack and that one's turning back in sharply there. Uh, already some turn here for Rampasad. And that one turning quite sharply back into Fernandez. Let's keep an eye on it. Uh, yeah, there has been uh, there was some turn and offer in the semi-final. Conditions have dried out here a bit. Let's see if there's some more for him. Ooh, well that certainly turned a long way. That is, a, is that a wide? No. Is it a dead ball? Let's see what the call is here. Did that bounce twice before it got? It's a no ball ball the same. Yeah, that bounced twice before it got to the batter, so it is a no ball. Yeah, I thought so, because it just didn't get up at all. Yeah, um, <laughs> Christian Rampas are trying to rip that ball. Well, he did rip it, but this one's gone high up into the air. The fielder's coming around, he can't get there. Well short of the fielder, one dropping in no man's land. They get two, but I tell you what, there's so much still on offer. That uh, previous one that stayed on the ground... That started way outside the off stump and ended up down the leg side. Yeah, that, he's really ripping those off bricks here at the Brian Lyle Cricket Academy. There is uh, a lot of spin on offer. 
Whoa, that's just over the off stump. Trying to repeat the shot uh, with a bit more success. Didn't touch it at all, but that one, I think, just over the off stump. Yeah, just trying to, to as best as possible to get that rotation, possibly a boundary option he's looking at there. Full toss this time. And trying to put so much lateral turn onto it, uh, he's just pushed it uh, straight onto the batter who uh, was so surprised by that full toss, couldn't put it away. Well, I tell you what, uh, both these batters, they are under uh, tremendous pressure indeed. Gone for the big hit. This could go straight down the fielders. Oh, he dropped it. Should have taken the catch. But uh, straight into the hands of Chase and straight out. Yeah, a, a regulation catch there at that deep mid-wicket position. You would have back uh, Ricardo Chase to take those catches. Not 10 out of 10. Unfortunately for him, he's unable to gather. And Fernandez uh, uh, gets a life. Yeah, they got a couple of runs also. This time, not quite as much turn there. Fernandez trying to hit with a turn. And at the end, that's uh, a very... That's an over in which uh, Fatima College, living dangerously, got eight runs, but they could have so easily lost a wicket there. 66 for three at the end of 14. So Fatima College still very dependent on this batting duo of uh, Mingo and uh, Fernandez to take them to some... Uh, a score of respectability with 36 balls uh, still available in this innings. If you add 36 to that total, they're just going to be hovering over that 110 mark. I'm sure uh, Coach Miguel Patti, he would want uh, his batters to take the score possibly anyway into the range of 125, 130. If they are indeed able to get to that 130 mark, I'm sure it's going to present a lot of challenges uh, for the presentation batting group. Well, the eighth bowler now on the attack here for presentation college. This is Brendan Budu, the national under-15 uh, captain. They should get one here. That's, uh, uh, they're trying to put some pressure on the fielders. Good idea, but uh, not getting uh, the second run. Brendan Budu has already written his name into the history books, hasn't he? He has indeed. And uh, we could see clearly here, video that the presentation, Ting Tang, uh, they believe that the spinners bowling at this stage of the innings would be a lot more uh, penetrative than the seamers. Straight to the fielder, another chance at a run out. If he had gathered that, that could have been curtains there for Mango this time. The latest uh, of the Fatima batsmen to, uh, they just look so skittish. They're just, uh, I don't think that they are mentally centered right now, these Fatima batters are for this contest. They're all keyed up at the moment. And we talk about uh, the effect of defeat that it has on you, but the effect of victory can also be uh, equally dangerous because they won yesterday's match, the North-South Classic Under-19. They won that, so there may be a sense of overconfidence for some of these Fatima players who are on that team. Good uh, stop there by Budu, half stop by Budu at least. But one also has to remember Vidya, from the moment that a game concludes when you start another game you're starting at zero if you're batting so it's all even steven so there's absolutely nothing you know uh, in terms of what that contest is all about oh that's a good delivery gets one played it off his mid stump actually making some room uh, it's easier said than done. You can say, it is e easy to say that uh, maybe seasoned professionals themselves would struggle uh, to turn off one game and into the other one. These are, these are young men, still very early in their career. The high of winning yesterday is still very much coursing through their veins. And there's absolutely, you know, nothing is wrong with celebrating. But one's got to understand that you've got to get back yourself, your mental framework in place uh, for the next encounter that yeah. follows. Yesterday, uh, Nisar Ali, the Nisar Ali, I believe, yes, the the coach uh, of the team, getting on to to get the victory. Let me just uh, make a correction on that. And uh, Nisar Mohammed, correction, the coach of the under-19 team. And Anil, of course, you have the duties for the South team. 69 for three after 15 overs. And uh, is it about that time that they will see Fatima press their foot on the accelerator? Just three runs in that last over. So Brendan Budu, 
Brendan Boudou uh, doing an excellent job for his skipper uh, Nikai Charlie and you know what uh, young Brendan Boudou he's such an exciting talent you know whether he's batting or bowling you know there's always just high expectation from this young man let's see if Rampasad can rip a few more here tucked away and that went down not a chance goes a begging here for presentation college chase dropped one mid wicket has put another one down here and that is another chance gone so Anil Lakhan is gonna depart for the moment here uh, matters of state to uh, respond to Ruskin Mark is gonna step in Oh, that's a nice notebook. Uh, I think I've seen some Form 5 students with a notebook like that, Ruskin. Well, it's a, it's How are you? a school's you? game, yeah. <laughs> well said indeed. <laughs> that's driven away. That's going to run away too close to the boundary. And they have crossed for two. They, they won't get the third run because it's a good return. Yeah, it is a school's match. And uh, Fatima College, uh, I've been taught a few lessons here because... Uh, Oh, well, where did that we, go? We have a 12th man well, on the field. We have a, there's a dog <laughs> that run onto the field just outside of your picture. He's playing his own game. Well, he's gotten somebody's <laughs> hat. I hope that's not your hat, Ruskin. <laughs> no, I'm hoping not, yeah. Yeah, it would, it would match well with your black and white outfit. True. But uh, I don't think it match any of the players out there, so they might be, they might be happy. Well. Now, somebody's going to may have to just run on and get Take him on. <laughs> 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 well, that was uh, Ramsaran who's come and run off and taken the cap Not a away from him. Chase him down now. Yeah. <laughs> taking away his bone. But I think it was Ramsaran's <laughs> cap, in fact, that the dog has stolen. Uh, so, uh, moment of comedy here. And he's looking most annoyed that he's gotten <laughs> the cap taken go away. But anyway, on we go here, Ruskin. Uh, Fatima certainly under the gun here uh, in the early stages of this one. That's uh, gonna gonna get at least one here. They might push for the second, a chance at a run out. They certainly have been giving presentation to chances, but mm. two drop chances already yeah. in the last two a couple overs. And two near misses, well about three near misses with their returns to effect run out. Um, from the very first ball we saw that one, and then uh, subsequent to that we had a couple others. So uh, they flirted with danger. And again playing across the line, gets one this time. Wondering about if there's anything in the psychology of uh, the, the fact that some of these Fatima players, especially the main players who went mm -hmm. uh, earlier, they played in that North-South Classic and did mm -hmm. so well and won the title mm -hmm. yesterday. Yeah, well, uh, I suppose there's some residue about that. So they obviously came into this game brimming with confidence, but they still have to produce no matter what. Well, that's a wild-looking swing. And they could get, could get a couple of runs. This might be uh, the ball going towards the boundary. That's a brilliant bit of fielding. And that is... Uh, Riyad Mohammed, the outstanding opening bat, showing, putting his body on the line there. Mm -hmm. well, that's, and that's the effort that the bowlers and the captain will want to see. You know, that no matter what, that no, even though you have Fatima on the ropes, don't let them off the hook because you never know what could happen in the second inning. So it may come down to a run here, a run there. And uh, he certainly did his part in saving one there. They ran three in the end always very difficult to chase the ball down when you're running directly behind it and uh, it's how he got around it there that was beautifully done no slider we had to go again this could be interesting he misses oh that could have been a second run as <laughs> they well. are going to get a second run here and uh, that's an overthrow but uh, the chance was on to run him out but there was no one at the stumps uh, to effect that run out and what what is Avinash Narayan signaling here? Another strategic timeout, I would imagine. Yes, it is. And uh, with uh, four overs to go, Fatima College up to 16 overs, are 80 for three. Vinod Mamchan's going to be coming to join Ruskin Mark uh, after this uh, break. We'll take a short break here. Fatima College, 80 for three. They've lost uh, Ramdeen without scoring, Davis for 16, and Siwa run out for six. And uh, they have managed to take the score along to 80 for three. Projected score 100, that may not be enough. Join us in a few minutes' time. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants 
and bladeless femtoe second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited, industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited, industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited, industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broad As we welcome you back here to the action at a packed Brian Lara Cricket Academy here in Taruba. And uh, we see Fatima having a long chat there. And I'm, I'm sure they're trying to work out what the approach is going to be the rest of the way. Four of us. Uh, so they have 24 deliveries to try to produce uh, maybe another 40 runs, possibly. Even 50 if they could get there. Chase, I'm sure, will have other ideas. And he was a bit expensive in the semi-final, Ruskin. He was greeted with a volley of shots. Uh, but uh, I'm sure he's going to try to pull himself uh, up around here. But he's much improved because he's, he's not bowling at full throttle. And uh, he has taken a lot of the pace off. And in fact, that has been the, the story of this inning so far. Most of the bowlers, especially the, the quicker ones, have opted not to go uh, full throttle. And, and they, maybe it's just a plan that they're working with. He is again right on target and... Uh, uh, almost getting uh, the batsman again to try to attempt some kind of suicide well, as far as the running between the wicket is concerned. Uh, yeah, the running between the wickets has been suicidal uh, from Fatima College. They've had uh, the one run out and Chase, uh, the projected score has dropped under 100. Mm -hmm. It uh, was at 120 at one point. Now it's, uh, it's dropping with every over. He has one for seven so far. This is his third over. And uh, again, he is bowling dot balls. And that's so important uh, at this stage because this is really happy hour now. They need to get a move on, Fatima. That's what Fernandez is trying to do, trying to use his feet, come down the track uh, to off put chase. But he's having none of it. He's bowling a good line. He's bowling just outside the off thumb. So in a way, you have to fetch him. And if you want to hit him over mid wicket, you have to pick him up from outside the off thumb. There he goes again, and there he goes, a miss again. So yeah. three dot balls. That's a testing line. He knows that Fernandez wants to pull him onto yep. the leg side. There's only one man on the boundary on the leg side. So there's acres of space if you can get the bat onto it. However, easier said than done, because yeah. Chase, with that line and that uh, taking the pace off it, it's been dangerous, to, uh, difficult to get away. I would bring the fine leg around just to protect, just in case he gets some kind of contact. Like that. And, uh, yeah, bring, <laughs> him cl cl bring him wider because you, you want to protect some ac acreage out there. Because, you have, like you said, you have the one man out at deep square leg. The fine leg, it really the line that Chase is bowling, he is, is hardly likely he's going to come into play. So bring him around a little bit. You could take that chance to bring him a little bit squarer and even bring this, the three man at deep mid wicket a little, or deep square leg a little squarer and try to protect more acreage. Again, and, and you see what I'm seeing for you. Look at the line he's bowling. Fine leg hasn't done anything in this over so far other than walking and walk back. Yeah. <laughs> the only 
plan. He's uh, the only thing he's going to do in this game is walk up the ball <laughs> the next <laughs> over. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because and and to me that is a, a better field. You know, because you want to plug all the gaps and and stifle Fatimo uh, as much as possible. You don't want to let them off the hook. He goes again right through the gate, it goes, and just as I was talking about fine leg coming into play, uh, but that's not his fault. He wasn't, he's not there for that. That went right through the wicket keeper's legs, and it went for four buys. Yeah, and not how far, unfortunate. Not, and not far away from the helmet <laughs> either. So that, that could have been even worse here. But still, Fatima College, you feel, are about maybe about 20 runs adrift uh, or more of where they should be right now. Yep. 85 for three at the end of 17. So as you said, they need runs, and uh, they, but they need some kind of an effort. The batsmen are just trying to hit across the line and are not making any real contact uh, with uh, that approach. So maybe they need to try something else and uh, see if they can get some runs here because they're desperate for some runs at the moment as Vidya gets a breather. And uh, Vinod, who has devoured uh, 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 a meal, <laughs> yes, is it, is it, was it a Big Mac? <laughs> a, a big meal. And, um, it's a delicious one. Yep, <laughs> so he's more, but I think we are talking about big. We have another big crowd on hand here, folks. So he's and Jalim. Jalim. Yep. yep. Push back on the offside. Jalim has been good. Just eight coming off his two overs, and from this position, they'll do well to, to get up to 110. Yeah, that, that will be a stretch right now because nobody seemed capable of approaching these slower bowlers. They do, I don't think they've, they've dealt with them very well. That's, that's a little bit of innovation there. Good shot there by Mingo. And that's four runs. In fact, it was Fernandez, the opener. Mm -hmm. so he's go, he goes on Quietly, the yeah. Quietly, Fernandez is playing. A brilliant hand there. Granted, he was the, 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 the part of the run out, and uh, the, the Sewa was most upset with him. Uh, but I don't think it was his fault in that run out. Sewa never looked at him. He just you know, looked at where the ball was going, and he was sprinting, going down to the striker's end, only to find that the, his partner, Fernandez, was standing there waiting to greet him, <laughs> which is not a good thing. So now let's see what he can do here now. They really need him to push on and probably bat through. There he goes. That's good cricket. They're just nibbling this one. They might go for a second. They're going to have to hurry on this field. Well, well, that is not what you wanted there because he had the chance of the run out because they were touching down just as he was about to pick up the ball. Yeah, Christian Rampasad on that occasion. Uh, but, you know, put pressure under the fielders. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to put pressure onto the fielders and uh, things like that would happen. And this is a good fielding ground, so, you know, there's a field there, you don't have too many excuses. Reverse sweep, and he finds the man just at that backward point position. And uh, so they've decided that they're going to go the unorthodox route here now, because trying conventional stroke play, not getting them anywhere. And uh, so we saw the reverse sweep, and, and uh, so they're trying here desperately to get some kind of score on the board. Nile Mingo comes into strike now. And he again is trying to, but no no luck. No luck at all. And uh, that is. so great to intent here, Ruskin, yeah. because they have seven wickets in hand. Yep. And you're running out of balls. You're, you're running out of overs here now. Somebody's going to have to take the bull by the horn here. Again, he goes for that little paddle, and he's going to get a couple runs here now. It may not get to the boundary. And in fact, <laughs> uh, they, they made a, a meal of it, really. Um, and then they try to now complete the fielding. Uh, in the end, they somehow got themselves into a little bit of a tangle there. Kaleem Mohammed eventually now... Did he touch the ball while he was off well, the field? Look at the last Riyad man Mohammed to touch the, the ball. He made a save here. Watch at the man who is touching the ball now. Looks at his right foot. He's still, yeah, under, he's still off the four. field. So that's four runs. Yep. Uh, should be a signal four. And yep. uh, was a was a valiant fact, effort. They have. I think they have. Nile Mohammed. Yep. Yeah. Mingo is coming back. On and this, this is end. a 50 run partnership between these two. 
came together with a score on 46 for 3. And uh, they've now taken up to 96 for 3. So we've seen so eight bowlers into, operation, into the operation tonight. So Mingo has done his bit. He's 23 from 27. And Fernandez, though, is the mainstay, 36 from 53. But he's using up an awful lot of balls. Uh, just trying to, to, to muscle the ball as opposed to just trying to place the ball into the gaps and, and maybe running a couple of runs. So down to the last 12 balls here now for Fatima. 12 legal deliveries. Chase, who's done very well so far. One for eight. And that's a short ball. And that's hammered away. And that left like a tracer bullet through mid-wicket for four. Yeah, well, he has to go. And it's good to see Fernandez opening up now. Just prior to, to facing that delivery, he had called the 12th man out and sent back his tight part. So I don't know if that was holding him back. So you can see he's a lot, he's moving <laughs> a little bit freer now. <laughs> and there you can see uh, Napri, uh, the Fatima uh, bench. Some of the guys clapping the 100 and some just intent on seeing how far they can go they're a bit worried out there yeah the hundred is on the board now here he goes again but it goes straight up in the air it might be the fall of the fourth wicket it is again he was trying to get on with things as is necessary at this time right, and, uh, but that is the end of the the fourth wicket fernandez goes for 40. We scored Riyad Mohammed. <laughs> so it's a good catch, a, a nice tumbling catch in the end. And uh, anything that goes up in the lights under these conditions could be tricky. And uh, so to, to keep his eyes on it and then complete the catch is a big thing. Look at him, he seemed to get under the ball probably a little too much. And then had to sort of backpedal a little bit and uh, went back and completed the catch uh, there. So and the facilities like this, though, Ruskin, are where the, the, the light is high. It's up to international standard. Mm -hmm. It's easier than the, some of those uh, community grounds where we normally cover some <laughs> of the matches where the light, uh, the pylons are very short. And so it leaves the darkness and comes right. into light, and the reactionary period is very short. Uh, so. Mohammed would have had no excuse there had he put that one down. So 100 for four it is. And uh, it certainly is a, a challenge for them now to get as many runs as they possibly can the rest of the way. And uh, the new batsman is Mahes. And uh, he, cannot, he doesn't have any time to settle. He, he has to try his very best to just get on with things or get his partner on strike, get Mingo back on strike. He has three deliveries left in this over. He needs to, even if it means sacrificing himself, but he has to get Mingo back on strike, you know, quickly. And that's very well played on his part. Just a one run. I don't think they need to worry too much. Mingo has been timing the ball very well. And uh, we're in the penultimate over of this innings. And the court has seen a, a pretty good contest so far. Uh, they saw one or two good early flashes of brilliance from Davis. And uh, then Fernandez stuck around. Mingo has played a good hand here. Can he finish the job? He tries to go again. He's going to have to hurry. And uh, can only get a single here. That has been the story of for Fatima. They just can't seem to... You know, it's like uh, you ever did a, a boxing match yet and you hear a boxer say couldn't free his arms. I think this is exactly what Fatima is experiencing here right now. They, they just can't seem to get uh, the ball where they want to. They're trying. It's just not working out. Again, lack of pace on the delivery. So all they can get is a single. And that completes the over. Uh, more importantly, 103 for 4 after 19 overs. And, uh, but Mango is off strike and that is probably what they didn't want at this stage but you have to take every run that you could get yeah at this point in time 103 for four they have to go for everything 
every single thing. They can still Ruskin try to get up to 115 here. And really big over. Yeah, need a really big over. It's going to be Khalid Mohammed, who has bowled two overs for six. So I think uh, what you may see happening here is that they may well be looking to charge him, which I think they should have done early. Look to put him off. He bowls this little nagging line and length. But he doesn't really turn the ball, Khalid Mohammed. But what you don't get from him is pace on the, onto the ball. It's very, very slow, which could be hard to dislodge. And you're, you're, well, I don't think we're not seeing, uh, uh, it's not like a windy evening. We don't have any of the flags, so we can't tell uh, what the wind is like. Although I, I think it seems pretty still at the moment. And uh, so you're, you're not really hitting against the breeze per se. And uh, they're going to have to hurry here, and they do. They get a comfortable single. That's a good stop at that deepest extra cover position. So just the one run. So now they get Mingo back on strike, which is good cricket from Mahes here. Mingo has to go. He is on 24. And I could see him trying to get there, but... They go for one. They're going for a second. They're going to have to hurry. This is done. The wicket keeper doesn't take it. Then they get not just two. They're going to get a third run. And uh, for some reason, Ali couldn't. It took a, an awkward bounce, but I thought he had enough time to adjust. Uh, all he needed to do was catch the ball, but he probably was thinking more in terms of the run out than actually collecting the ball. Look at this. This is like a blind turn. He just dipped and turned. The ball was already on the in the fielder's hand. And he certainly could have taken that. That was a yeah, that was a, not a, a difficult take for him. And yeah. not only did they not affect the run out, they also conceded a third run. I think Ali took his eyes off the ball there. And that, one, that one, one. <laughs> so they're going to get one more. And uh, so Mingo goes to 27. Mahes is on four. So there are three deliveries, three legal deliveries left. Down the wicket he goes, and uh, but again, he can only pick out the man at that extra cover position, and he can't get more than that, just the one run. So those uh, young boys at the front, they have been waving that flag, that Fatima flag all evening. They're here to support their school. It's the one just peels off the outside edge. And that's four runs. I don't think you're going to overhaul that one. And uh, that's four crucial runs here for Fatima. Up to 109 now. So they're pushing. They're trying. They have two deliveries to try to get as many runs as possible. Well, how how you like that, Ruskin? True and a wrong. Bowling right arm off spin. He's actually bowling true and over. True and over. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just to put the, the, the batsman <laughs> off. He's... And, and actually, I saw Ganesh Mahabir used to do the opposite. He used to bowl over the wicket and end up running right across the umpire. You know. Wow. That couldn't help him. Yeah. <laughs> the umpires would not have seen the possible leg before decisions. This is a good shot. He's going to get one. They may, uh, may as well go for the second run, and they do. And uh, that's two more to the kitty here. doesn't matter who scores them once they get them. 115 is on the board now for Fatima. Yeah, so and you said they were trying to get to 120 is what you, you were trying to. But 115 is the final tally here for them. So Mango remains 28 not out. My hairs. 10. So 115 for 4. At least it's something that the bowlers could bowl at. Whether or not it's enough. Can't see. They made 109 against Snap River College and defended that. So, Presentation College would need 116. So, you just look at those bowling figures. Agard, 1 for 14 from 2. Racha, not for 15 from 2. Chase, 2 for 15 from his 4. Naim Mohammed, not for 6 from 2. Mohammed, not for 19 from his four overs. Jalem, who just completed his third over there, 19 runs. Rampasad had not for 14. And Budu, just the one over that cost him four runs. And I tell you what, 
the lower portion of that, although they didn't get the wickets, they are the ones who I felt really stifled Fatima because they just the timing they just threw off the timing entirely with the slower bowlers so that's the situation at the moment we're going to take a very short break join us in about 15 minutes or so when we see the presentation reply This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited, industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited, industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited, industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited, industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited, industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited, industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited, industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, 
minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, pre including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, 
pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia, using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery.
So, as we welcome you back here to the Banla Cricket Academy, we're getting ready for the second innings. Uh, the reply, the chase for 116 by Presentation College of San Fernando. That's after the restricted Fadima to 115 for four. And uh, now it's up to Fadima to try to restrict Presentation. In fact, it, we would like to think that they'll have to get wickets early in order to have any chance at all in this game. So the opening pair, the two Mohammeds. So they no doubt Looking, Kaleem Mohammed, an ultra aggressive young man. And the first ball is hit down the ground for four runs. No mucking around here. Uh, this was right in his arc, and he just went through with the shot. He went the aerial for a while, but four runs is four runs, as they say, and uh, he will claim it uh, quite nicely. So that's a, a, a wonderful way to start the reply. It just kind of takes the pressure off everybody. And he goes again, and he goes aerial again, and he gets another boundary. And this one goes all the way for six runs. What a fantastic start. This is Kaleem Mohammed. Lighting up the Balara Cricket Academy. It was right in his swinging wheel there. And he just went through the line of the ball. And uh, just like that, he's up to 10 off just two balls. And the presentation faithfuls are loving this. Same cannot be said for Ramdeen. Short ball this time. Pulled away through mid-wicket and a uh, good bit of field in there. They're not worried about a second run. So certainly uh, a, a sort of a a rude awakening here for Aditya Ramdeen. Certainly trying to see if we can pull things back here now because it could get away from him very, very quickly. It's a short ball and uh, this one is pulled. They go for and this could be a chance of the run out and uh, they make a meal of it. Really and truly, uh, the ball was thrown at the right end, thrown back to the bowler, but the bowler uh, was in front of the wicket, never really tried to get back behind the wicket, and only now as the ball is arriving, and uh, he never caught the ball, he had no idea where the wicket was, and uh, he needed to get back behind the stumps, uh, so he could see the wicket and see the ball, uh, but he had to turn, and in trying to turn, he never collected the ball. So we almost had a, an early mishap, and uh, uh, that was a real let off there for presentation. And uh, but I'm sure uh, they would try to sort that out, not be too worried about those mistakes, but to keep going and uh, try to put this game away as quickly as possible. As uh, Vidya has come alongside me, so. Um, th this is a tough over for Ramdeen so far. And, uh, more runs and uh, another comfortable single uh, for Riyad Mohammed this time as he too is off the mark. So presentation off to the perfect start. They got 12 off the very first over. And 12 runs off the first over for presentation. Uh, one of our 
staff members predicted it will be a 10 wicket victory for presentation. Obviously, he went to school there, <laughs> uh, but uh, it's going to be difficult to see that happening. Uh, Fatima will fight to the end here, but um, you know, for Ramdin, you have to really feel sorry for him. He's had a great tournament going for a duck earlier today and now being hit for a six and a four first ball. I'm sure he has the mental fortitude to come back here, but Fatima have to do something special right now. They, they're just defending 115 runs. They need to get, make some inroads quickly here. They de definitely have to. They, they can't wait. There's no, no second chance for them here. They have to do something special, and uh, the best remedy for them is wickets, early wickets. And more importantly, if they could get see the back of these two, more particularly Kaleem, because he can take the game away from you in a hurry. Well, 11 off 3 would certainly suggest that if you've never seen him uh, before. For Fatima College, their top bowlers of the season have been Malik Lewis and Caden Mack. Both of them have uh, four wickets apiece. After that, Zachary Sira, three, and Aditya Ramdeen, uh, the only other bowler with more than one wicket for the season. Uh, they haven't been as prolific as, let's say, the presentation college San Fernando, where you have the likes of Rampasad and Ramkisun picking up wickets at will this season. Yes, it is. But, and, and, and that is the, the, the problem right now. Here's the ball in the air and he slips and falls. Well, well, well. Davis was trying to turn. And uh, just as he was heading there, uh, the ball was just sailing over his head. He was running in, trying to negotiate the line because he could have been blinded too because the batsman was trying to play it on the onside the ball took a leading edge and spooned out in the offside he was probably he probably saw it late but as he started to move he just kind of lost his footing and the chance went uh, a begging so another opportunity there for Fatima that they couldn't take Mark hit him on the pad appealing for an LBW not out says the umpire and uh, probably just sh starting down that leg side and uh, trying to turn it on the onside, a leg by is the signal. Oh, see, certainly it looked like it might have been heading towards that leg stump, but where does it pitch? Woo! <laughs> I tell you what, that hit the looked, back foot, yeah. That hit the back foot. <laughs> it looked pretty, pretty close. No, I think it's just, just outside. Touching down outside. Just leg. outside yeah. the leg stump, yeah. As it was slowed down there the second time, yeah, I think it's just outside the leg stump. Uh, but more importantly, Kaleem Mohammed is on strike and I think the fans would like to see him back for a long period here. And yeah, that's why, but he hits this one, NDA could be out, no, it's just over the head of the fieldsman again, it's just not going Fatima's way, uh, Mango trying to get back there, not able to negotiate the ball, he seemed like he wanted to turn and run initially, Vidya, and then he decided no to, st to start to backpedal. But by the time he realized the ball was close to him, it was over his head. Yeah, he was in between uh, that, uh, that uh, grapevine sort of sh shuffle back and he just got himself in a real tangle. And he's bowled him. Well, well, well. He hit right across that one and uh, paid the ultimate price. The ball probably kept a little bit low as well. But uh, Kali Mohammed has to go 13 or 4. And, uh, but it's a big, big breakthrough there for Caden Mack and for Fatima. Yeah, certainly a big wicket indeed, but a poor shot, you have to say, uh, from Mohammed. This one, he slowed it up just a little bit, and it really moved a long way from outside the off stump. Uh, even though there was a lot of movement on that ball, it really was not the shot for that ball. Kept a little bit do low, and he was there through the shot already, and he has to go. And that's what we've gotten from him. He's an exciting player to watch. The problem is shot select selection has let him down through the season. Well, it, it's, um, and he's not the only one. Uh, there are a number of uh, batsmen who have suffered a similar fate. At the Ramsaran is the new batsman. So he gets an opportunity here to put his name in the lights uh, by playing a good inning for his team. And I'm sure... Uh, Riyad is probably going to tell him, um, you know, don't you don't need to hurry. You don't need to make these runs in nine overs or ten overs. Uh, that would be good. But the bottom line is, uh, take what the bowlers give you and, and, you know, play sensible cricket. And then after that, you can become more expansive when uh, 
uh, you get settled in. Uh, Adi Ramacharan is actually the top scorer for presentation in the competition. 50 runs he has. Riyad Mohammed averages 42. He's had uh, 42 runs for the season. So he takes his guard and uh, waits here now. What does Ramacharan have to offer? And he's in behind it. That's good cricket. Good sensible cricket. No need to give away another wicket just so. And uh, take what the bowlers give you and uh, try to build from there. And, uh, presentation College, no doubt, are the ones favored at this point, I would imagine. Uh, but they could, you know, you could get carried away with that and just feel like you, you know, you, you want to, I don't know, as you, we were talking earlier, if somebody residue from yesterday's uh, defeat, so you want to take revenge, so to speak. So you want to embarrass the opposition and, and you just play into their hands. Uh, which can also work against, uh, against you in the same way that victory can be poison in your veins. Mm -hmm. uh, same, same way. Well, at the end of over number two, 17 for one. So Mark with a good over getting the wicket. Well, Mack would have seen his sister, Charlotte Mack. Uh, she played for Holy Name Convent earlier today. They uh, ended up on the losing side. He'll be hoping to at least uh, make sure one member of the family comes <laughs> home with a gold medal today. But really good effort by Holy Name Convent earlier in getting to 92 for 7. They were in all sorts of trouble at 50, at 40 for 6. They lost three wickets in one over and then eventually got to 92. But uh, the, the Western Wolves were just too good for them earlier. It certainly was a, um, uh, a good, exciting uh, game of cricket. And here's another one that's spooning away from the, the batsman. They're playing on the onside and the ball goes on the offside. And he doesn't seem too happy uh, at the moment there, Riyad Mohammed, for whatever reason. Yeah, just playing a bit too early. Uh, I think it's the, the pace, pace off deliveries more than anything that's causing problems. You uh, did talk about that earlier. And uh, that seems to be the way to go. And uh, for the spinners, you were seeing an exaggerated amount of turn mm -hmm. uh, today. And, but again, you have to apply the pace on the ball. They're not giving you much to work with. So you have to time the ball properly. As the crowd looks on intently. Again, he's in behind. He goes for a single. There's nothing there if he hurries. Well, well, well. He doesn't pick up the ball cleanly again. So those are just little openings there for Fatima and they can't take advantage. Yeah, those half chances need to go your way. When you're in a situation like this, just defending 115, you need those half chances to go your way. You need to take them and uh, find uh, an opening earlier, early in this innings. Yeah, they got one. I'm sure they'd love to get a second one. Let's see what happens. And uh, that's going down to third man. There is a third man, but how did he stop that? Because he just seemed like he was losing his footing and was sliding all over the place. But boy, he just put the right hand down and he just stopped the ball. And he didn't just stop it. He actually picked it up cleanly. Look at this again. He was going all over the place. Yes, <laughs> but uh, the, the right foot just went completely. But that's a great stop, uh, given the circumstances, because he actually almost got it behind him <laughs> the way uh, he was going there. So great, but uh, he saved a couple of runs there for his team. And he limited the batsman to just the one run. And uh, again, that's a good delivery. And uh, uh, just... Uh, treated with respect, and I think that's the that's the key here. If the if the bowler bowls a good delivery, you treat it like a good delivery. You don't just try to do something out of the ordinary with it, and then you, you give your wicket away, or you you know you run into some kind of problem. Coach of uh, Presentation College, there. Yeah? I'm sure he's pretty happy with the effort for his team by his team so far. It's another good delivery. They're going to hurry again. They're going to get the single uh, once more. That's good batting by. Uh, Riyad Mohammed taking uh, the singles, trying to rotate strike. Right, El Ramsaran, the coach of Presentation College. When you consider that Presentation College have not been in this league for, for a long time, they've come back, and boy, have they come back strong, winning the senior title, winning eight games in a row. That's another. Beautiful delivery, just nibbling at it outside the off stump there. And you could see Ramsaran admonishing himself because he knows he was naughty there and he didn't need to play. It's the end of the over three in the books. It's 20 for one. 
Budu's enjoying himself, isn't he? The uh, <laughs> national under-15 captain. And talking about winning matches in a row, he led Trinidad and Tobago to five consecutive wins. And they really look good in that tournament, uh, Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, going on to win, I believe, is it their 10th title overall at under-15 level? And, uh, you know, that, and that's the foundation, you know. We, um, we, we do Trinidad and Tobago comes, remember when Ghana used to win everything at age group level? at one time in football uh, we seem to be able to do that at that level is when we ask the players to transition you know to the next level is where we see the gaps in the game uh, locally so mark will continue one for five that's another good delivery and uh, they're going to get a comfortable single as well and uh, no need to push for a second the the, uh, the chances of you getting that or completing that are very slim well you do see that effect uh, that disparity between uh, titles at junior level and then not at senior level argentina have dominated at under 20 level in football for instance uh, but yet the three the last world cup before this one was 36 years ago and you would really have expected a team like that to dominate uh, when these players mature that's another good delivery and a bad miss again. He seemed to have it firmly in his grasp and then the, he didn't have it again. Um, because I was looking to see if he was going to effect a run out, but he missed the ball completely. It was not a difficult take and would you believe it, the ball just eluded him and uh, it went right through his grass down to that backward point boundary for four runs. Yeah, I think it was the possibility of getting the run out that got to him. Took his eyes off it and uh, uh it got away jalim i think is uh yes he's <laughs> there and there's the skipper of uh, rio claro west I, I was just about to say is that a is that a, a sign the 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 one victorious team chatting with another another team hoping well, well, to I'll be tell victorious. you what if you want <laughs> advice from anyone who's won take a trophy <laughs> take it from the the captain who won the trophy earlier today <laughs> And she probably tell them, no, don't mess up it let's keep both titles in the south <laughs> And he's probably saying, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're trying, you know. But it's so good to see uh, Rio Claro West coming up victorious here. F presentation trying to uh, join them there. And, and just a uh, thought on that, uh, to re just to return to that women's final, of course, that's the third time that Holy Name have lost in the finals. Uh, the last two times, they, they were coached by our former colleague, uh, Justin Dukey, who right. tragically uh, passed mm -hmm. away in uh, 2019. Are they, are they becoming um, similar to what happens with Guyana in CPL? Yeah, five times in a row. Well, they would certainly want to avoid that. <laughs> it's another delivery on the legs. That's going to cost them a couple. Uh, they've gone for one. They should take the second. They do. And uh, it's uh, quite comfortably completed as well. And, and this to me is a better approach. It's try, instead of trying to blast the ball uh, all over the place, just kind of take your time and build a, a proper innings and uh, just milk the bowlers. Uh, what it does to it allows the captain to keep the bowlers on a little bit longer and you could just double your score, triple your score off of them. And uh, he, uh, he, for a moment, they looked like he was going to make an extravagant shot. And then at the last moment, you can see him check that little drive, a push drive. He survives. It's 27 for one with four overs completed. Some runs coming in that over. Prez uh, San Fernando in this tournament have batted, uh, they've, they've scored their runs at just about 6.53 uh, per over. And so they are going along at pretty much that. There is the Argentine captain uh, celebrating uh, the World Cup win. And he would have also won it, I believe, at, uh, it would have been youth at, level. The, at youth level. Youth, yep. Won the Olympic medal also. So that's one great example but that, of but the that, transference of under 20 yep. to, to senior but that, level. But that was one of the, the kind of like the, I suppose, the mystery of international football. How it is Messi who's won everything at every other level uh, and never won a World Cup until his very last World Cup. And well, we hope it is his last because you never know. Well, the, the other, teams, yeah, the other teams are hoping also yes. that it is his last. But certainly yeah. it is his last uh, days at uh, PSG. It, it was announced today that he will be leaving PSG. And uh, he went to Saudi Arabia, uh, I think, on a, a promotional uh, stint. And many, all the alarms went up whether or not he was looking to join um, Cristiano Ronaldo. 
in that part of the world. That's a good delivery and almost got under the bat there. You could see him having to dig down and keep it out there. Riyad Mohammed living dangerously because he was playing across the line of the ball as well. That is very similar to how he got out yesterday in the North-South Classic. He played a lovely 21, but uh, that seems to be the shot that he uses. When he's under pressure, he just plays, gets outside of the line of the ball and flicks it through the leg side. That's where his, his release shot is. Tries it again, and uh, he flicks it to, to the man at mid-wicket, and uh, he can't get a run. So a pretty good over so far. He's just kept the ball in front of the batsman forcing them to play Patty doesn't look happy at all he never looks happy but I'm sure he is at some point joined Fatima College in uh, 2000 has won the one league title and the one intercall title during that time but it's really at youth level that's where he's uh, really excelled 11 under 14 titles and 13 under 16 titles well certainly has a, a, a good history of winning and uh, his brother was I suppose the more accomplished cricketer, if you, do you want to say that. A pretty well, decent fast bowler, medium yeah. fast bowler. Uh, Ricardo, uh, Ricardo Patti, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, Miguel might have something else to say about that. Well, they, they always do, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> Sibling rivalry, yes. they call it. <laughs> he gets all the fee, but I do all the hard work. You know, there's a short ball, that's four runs. You're gifting them. The, the, the man at fine leg was up, and all he had to do was just help it over his head. That he did and uh, pocketed four lovely looking runs there and uh, he goes into double figures now he goes to 11 from 13 deliveries it's 31 for one thank well, you very much yeah it was on the line of the leg stump and uh, mohammed who tends to that initial movement takes him towards the offside to start with was already quickly in place and uh, played that shot well well we're seeing some contrasting faces there some people look happy some not so happy well, there's also a, 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 a space that looks like he's taking a punch <laughs> to the <laughs> to left eye. That's a delivery that kept pretty low. He was on the front foot, though, so he was able to keep a straight bat and play it out onto the offside, which is good bowling, but even better batting. Like I see him yeah. indicating that the ball is keeping a little bit low. Yeah, there, uh, there was a delivery which was bowled earlier uh, in the match. I think it was by the second uh, bowler, that's uh, Mack. Uh, that that kept so low it bounced twice before it got to the batter well it's uh, i suppose part of the vagaries of we have precious little water he goes for the quick single he's gonna have to hurry again the return is at the bowlers and i thought he would have tried which was closer to him here the chances of of him hitting here would have been much better than going down to the wiki keepers end. Uh, however the batsmen are able to complete the run and uh, that takes the total up to 31 for the loss of one wicket after five overs Mohammed is 11 and uh, Ramsaran who is there with him has uh, gone on to 12 as uh, or Ram has gone on to seven I should say and Mohammed is up to 12 so uh, after they complete that over five overs in the books it's 32 for one. Vinod is back. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma. So we're back here, yeah. pushed away by uh, Mohammed. Mohammed continues his purple patch this season he goes on now to 13 he has been really good with the bat and even got in and out south where he got 21 um, before he threw his hand away trying to play across the line uh, ramdeen do not a bad over at all from the young man and uh, i was impressed with his line of course the short ball that went for four probably looking to give uh, the batsman that mohammed just that surprise element it's here's mark Squeezed the wheel just for a square chance to run out here. A direct hit might have had him there. As I say, good night, Anil Laka. Yeah, pleasant good night to, to you, Vinod. Know, pleasant good night to all of viewers, listeners, wherever you may be around the globe. You are looking at the Intercall final, the boys' Intercall final, secondary schools on the ninth uh, boys' final. Right here at the Brianna Cricket Academy, it's Fatima College versus Presentation College of San Fernando. 
Fatima winning the toss and electing the bat scored 115 in the allocation of 20 overs and Presentation College responding with 34 for 1 into the power play. Outside the off-stop, he's reaching for this protection down on the sweeper, a boundary, and that cover gets won. So Mohammed, uh, you can see him just stepping it up a bit. Yeah, Riyad Mohammed has been in sublime form this entire season, and I'm sure he's going to be pushing some of the senior guys in terms of the under-19 setup. He definitely will want to try and remove one of those guys and get into that national under 19 set of Venom. You can see Kevin Gregg there, yeah, our cameraman, his brother Zachary Siwa is playing for Fatima tonight. Pushed up on the offside by Ramsaran. There is no run. This is the last of the power play. And uh, it's 35 for one. And there is Kevin Gregg. So Fatima College having scored 115 is that, that kind of score Vinod where it's in between. It's not a pass score but it's a score that will keep you in the contest if you take wickets on a regular basis. There's a presentation, College Posse. Slow delivery, pushed away on the offside by Ramsaran. So Ramsaran would want to utilize the next few deliveries before the fielding restriction comes into effect. Uh, I don't think he's thinking about that, though, Anel. Uh, Adi Ramsaran, a young, exciting uh, batter out of Central. His father, Riddle Ramsaran, is the coach of the Presentation College outfit. There you can see some of the youngsters just taking in the game. It's Bolim driving all over that, and that's the end of Ramsaran. It's now 35 for 2, Presentation College. So Adi Ramsar and bull neck and crop here by a brilliant delivery. Pitch right up and Ramsar looking to go down the ground with it. Brendan Budu, national under 15 captain. Very good batsman. He goes out there now. And he has a big role to play together with Riyad Mohammed. Yeah, Brendan Boudou, an exciting young cricketer from Southeast Trinidad and Trinidad. Someone who has been making a lot of strides as a young man, Brendan Boudou. Haven't taken the Trinidad and Tobago on the 15 uh, team to, to the title in the just recently on the 15 regional tournament, Brendan Boudou. Skipper of that team, leading Trinidad and Tobago unbeaten during that series and bringing home the silverware. And just earlier this week, he led South to a crushing victory over North in the under 17 North South Classic. And now there's a change of bowling at the northern end. Zachary Siwa is going to take up the attack. Siwa struggled with the bat before he got run out. Yeah, and just, just recapping what took place, um, I must admit that. The communication between him, uh, Zachary Siwa and the opener, you know, it was only a, a matter of time before yeah, either one of those guys would have well, perished that, via the run-out route. Fernandez played the ball on the offside. Siwa, without looking up at his partner, he ran down. So on that... Uh, in terms of that, and with the ball being played in front of Fernandez, it was his call. He see what wrong the wicket, driving a bit loosely there, Mohammed. If Mohammed goes now, players will be a bit worried. They will indeed be a bit worried. So Riyad Mohammed has a a huge task here not only for himself but also to ensure that this Fatima outfit does not uh, keep making inroads into into their batting lineup. There's Miguel Patti again. Much better by Mohamed. Just turning the wrist, getting to the pitch of it and turning the wrist on it, getting it away from mid one for one. So Riyad Mohamed, very composed, very stylish young man. Patti not looking happy at all there. 
But as a coach of the team, there's absolutely nothing he could do from the stands here. Uh, we know it's all up to his players to execute whatever plan you know, they've put in place for each individual batter. Dong the left side, signal wide by the umpire. So uh, Zachary Siwa, one of those youngsters who are vying uh, to get into the Trinidad Under-19 team as well, Vinod, which would be travelling to uh, St. Kitts. I think we're travelling to St. Vincent. St. Vincent, my yes. apology, for the regional 3D and 50 over tournament. Well, even the press bench wears a worried look. Played away nicely by Mohammed. He's running, plays playing and running, and he gets off the mark. So very risky indeed. Uh, that single, Brendan Budu, just hitting and taking off. Had there be had there be a, a direct hit, possibly it would have been cuttings for a young Brendan Budu. And for whatever reason, you know, tonight the, the, the batters just seem uncertain in terms of their running between the wickets. Their judgment has, I, I must admit, has been clouded to a certain extent uh, in their judgment. Nerves. I see Roger Ali there. Uh, Roger carries a lot of weight in Presentation College. Yeah, he's a big unit. Short, looking to pull, not really getting up. And it eludes the fielder uh, down at backward square. They should be going back for two here. And the Mohammed settles just for one. But again, you can see Mohammed looking to pull that. The ball not bouncing as he uh, suggested. There's your good friend Roger. They yeah. say he's a man who rules the ground at Union Hall and he gives it a double rule. You well know about that, Anil? <laughs> well, the Silver here at the Brown Cricket Academy, there has been a lot of um, uh, festival cricket being played over the last week. So one would think that on this surface, the likelihood of the ball uh, keeping down a bit might be very evident. Driving, there's protection down there at the cover boundary. So just one. And Fatima, Fatima College would know that if they can get the wicket of Mohammed and Budu here, and that is Brendan Budu's dad in the middle. I want to say congratulations to Paul Jen for sticking with school's cricket for 25 years. I saw Omar Khan downstairs earlier today and Omar Khan is the one who started it. He took cricket to Paul Jen when he was the corporate communications manager at uh, Paul Jen and they've stayed ever since with secondary schools cricket. Uh, I haven't heard anything about primary schools in recent times. This time it keeps low. He's wrong. The wicket is going to be difficult to get at leg before decision there. That one probably angling down the leg side and uh, Mohamed lives the fight another day, but another delivery that kept low. To see what in. That ball angling into him, and I must admit, that looked a lot closer uh, than uh, first uh, uh, at the first look. So see what? Interesting first over from him. 40 for 2 after 7. Presentation College Rhythm Section and their mascot. He's been bearing that flag for the entire night. So Presentation College has a huge following as expected. So this is a key moment in the game here for Fatima as their national off spinner and captain. Joshua Davis comes into the attack now. Joshua has had a good season with the TTCB Premiership on the 19 team. But he will also need uh, some support from the other end as well. Well, in fact, he has decided not to come on. So he will not be into the attack now, Davis. He said that well Mark is going to take one more. 
So Mark being successful in his previous over is asked to continue. He's asking Mark for one last big effort here. So Mark is bowling with a slip, a third man, a backward point, a sweeper on the cover, boundary, extra cover, mid off, mid on, mid wicket, and a square leg. Yeah, he is driving. Brandon Bulu just lent on that delivery, caressed it to mid off, and he was off and running immediately. Brandon Bulu, tell me more about Brandon Bulu, uh, Vinod. Well, Brendan Wood is a man who heals from the southeastern part of Trinidad and Tobago and uh, has been working out at KRC, they tell me, since the age of six. So, you know, he has been in cricket, involved in cricket. His dad, Dennis Wood, works very hard with him. And, uh, you know, he has gone from strength to strength. But he is indeed a wonderful talent. Yeah, he relies a lot on his timing. Mohammed. Has to be careful here, Riyad Mohamed. He knows that the others have to bat around him, but he needs to rotate the strike as well. So Riyad Mohamed is going to be involved as well as Liam Mamsa and a few of these guys who are playing tonight. They're doing that two-day trial game at Pear Road, I believe, this weekend. And at the end of that, I, I was told that they will be naming the national team, Anil. Well, I haven't, gotten, so I haven't gotten that information just yet, but mm -hmm. um, I'm told that they're going to select a group of players, you know, which will be vying for national selection. Well, once you give information, normally it's what we go by. So... And I think it's an excellent ploy to have a pool of players rather than naming 14 players with four reserves. What happens is that when you name players the reserves, the intensity and that whole mindset, you know, from the reserves is not really up to what you expect. So in the event that someone has to pull out because of injury. Don't like side. That's a good take. Excellent take. Fernandez. So it does keep the entire squad of players, you know, working extremely hard to get into the touring party. Yeah, that's that final 14. They'll be vying for places on that team. Driving through the offside. And uh, they're going to take one. It's a wonderful diving stuff from uh, Zachary Siwa at mid-off. I'll give Siwa some confidence. I must admit, he has been struggling in recent times, and I don't know if it's because of a lack of confidence or... I think he's putting himself under too much pressure. If you know the young man, you would know that he takes things to heart, and I think he just needs to relax, just needs to relax a bit. So it's the end of Mark's spell. He completes his four of us, two for 18, and you would want to say that he did well. Yeah, extremely uh, good effort from Mark. Four of us, two for 18. Not much uh, Joshua Davis uh, could ask of his Seymour. But still a lot of work for Presentation College to get over the line. You remember, they're chasing a target of 116 in 20 overs. So they're just about even Stevens at this stage. Well, at the end of that over, it's a strategic time out. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery. Refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, 
customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. So we're back here and uh, you can see the presentation Posse, uh, uh, the presentation college Posse and on the phone there is the dad of Nahil Mohammed. This is the Brendan Budu's dad is also in front and Kaleem Mohammed in the back there with uh, that vintage cap. He is a man who runs the presentation cricket talk. Outside the off some driving is Mohammed not getting, uh, not really in control he pushed out at it too quickly on a pitch where you have to play lead it's not a quick pitch as i say a good night to a fatima college boy <laughs> gerard basso a pleasant good night mr mamchan it, it is difficult tonight to take the eye patch off i i am a fatima old boy it is difficult to take that eye patch off well here you see what and again, the ball not coming up, but Mohamed is playing around that pad. Gets it to mid-wicket. He gets one. And I was told by Ruskin Mark, who keeps a lot of stats, that the scores were identical. At the same stage. At the same stage. And as you, as you mentioned, the wicket being low and slow, I, I was mentioning that to one of the Fatima coaches mid-innings. I told him from where we sat up here, it looked like it was slow. Added to that, the presentation bowlers did take pace off the ball and it worked for them. So Siwa's changed to over the wicket. Here he is now to Budo and it's bowling! Another delivery that uh, kept low and it was short. You can't blame Brendan Budo for that. It was short and he was uh, looking to pull that uh, through mid wicket and it uh, squirted along the, the, the two. The, the timbers are disturbed there. Pools everywhere, as they say. Yes. As you look at the ball again, you can see on a good length, just short of a good length, keeping a bit low. Mohammed playing all around it. And uh, as, as Ruskin mentioned to me off here, a lot of the batters he looked at today, they have been playing across the line a lot. Yeah, uh, you can find uh, that a lot in T20 cricket, but Mohammed has been different, though. And he has been good. 
And when you, as you mentioned, when you have a low, slow wicket, you play late and you, you play as straight as possible. New batter in for presentation is Rampasad. So Christian Rampasad, better known for his bowling. So he will have to do it with the bat now. 72 runs required of 69 balls. I would say the game is in the balance. You can see the parents there, they're sitting, they're watching with the kids. As Dr. Dolat, the former uh, principal of Naprima College, likes to see, the parents are the unsung heroes because the sacrifice yes. that they make for their kids to play cricket. Well, that, what you just saw there from Christian, was a pull through cover. He was pulling that and it went to cover. He gets a single, he gets off the mark and <laughs> the score goes on out of 45. Again, I think uh, evidence that the wicket is, is pretty much a slow wicket. Ball not coming onto the bat. Yes. Uh, and, and he's through the shot too early, skewing the ball to, to cover. As you mentioned, the parents, I, I, I had the chance to walk outside during the mid innings break. And as you guys mentioned earlier, the car park is full. The car park to the north side of us, behind us, is full. And both, both sides of the covered stand is full. Ball on a good length. Played out. Oh, that's timing for you. Beautiful, well timed. beautiful timing. And that's four. Mohammed just coming forward and presenting the bat onto that shot. That was timing all the way. Yeah. Again, on a good length and just pushing. Straight, straight through mid off to the boundary for four. So... Riyad Mohamed, who has been the main steal for Presentation College this season, continues to bat and bat well here. He's on the 22 of 28. Dare I say that was the shot of the, of the evening? Yes. Riyad Mohamed from Gasparillo. Slow delivery. And he's just pushing it down the ground enough, slowly enough that he gets a single. Mohamed lives just a stone's throw from here at the Brown Cricket Academy. And, of course, he's another one who has been at the KRC as the 50 comes up at KRC from a very tender age. He's, he's come through the ranks in South Zone from the under-13, the under-15, the under-17, and now the under-19. And uh, Brendan Budu was also a youngster who I said before came through there. Michael Rupa, our producer, is telling me that Brendan Budu, I uh, think Alan Lakan had, had asked me some stuff about him. He went to Irie Government Primary before moving on to Presentation College. So this is good captaincy from Davis now. Uh, coming into the attack with the, the, uh, the fall of a wicket and now uh, he is the senior bowler in this setup here. We're looking to push them further back. And there you can see uh, the guy with the Puma jacket, he, of course, is one of the better players from Presentation College. Sure. Crashed away through the offside and a good, good hand. lovely attempt down there by Mark. Nice shot there by Riyad Mohamed. So Mohamed is really looking good here at the moment. Mark 2 for 18 of his 4 and uh, showing his prowess in the field as well. Mohamed, talk to him again. So Fatima College will be looking to take the title back north. I think Holy Name from the north, they lost to Rio Claro earlier on today, Rio Claro West. And if Fatima goes under here, then the only thing that they will be taking back to know tonight is Ruskin Mark. <laughs> this is played away to square leg, and there is no <laughs> run. So Davis, as, as I said before, he's had a good season so far. to 
turn the screws. Just every dot ball will increase the pressure here, Jared. No, 63 needed from 62. It's now above a runner ball needed. And it's time. There's a goal. He's caught he's he's behind. He's caught behind. Delivery outside the off stand. Backing away just before Davis bowled that delivery. Uh, you could have seen uh, Rampasad backing away slightly. Look at the force it through the offside. And he feathered that one to uh, the wicket keeper. It's Joshua Davis showing his metal here, showing his worth, showing why he is a national player and has earned himself national selection. Yet another batter falling to a ball outside the off stump, so fishing at it. Presentation under some problems now. Uh, stole by Fidia Ramphal, or resident statistician, and that is Fernandez, Fernandez's 10th dismissal uh, so far this season in the, t t in the T20 tournament. So we want to remind all of you as that this is the not, not the end of the secondary school's cricket season. There's still the KFC Golden Cup coming up. That's T10. Still a free. Ricardo Chase looking to turn away behind square. So the wrong is coming in now. And at the end of over number 10, halfway through, the score is 53 for 4. Remember that the target is 116. We take a short break here. When we come back, it'll be Ruskin Mark and Fidia Rafa. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. And as we welcome you back, we see a quick single. Actually, we've got a couple and uh, uh, good aggressive running there. And uh, the president just looking on. Uh, is it better video we call him president or we call him vice president? Vice president. Vice president. But it sounds like it's a demotion, but in truth and in fact, it's a promotion. A huge promotion, <laughs> in fact. <laughs> he's the president of the Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board, but he's the vice president of Cricket West Indies. But there goes your invitation to the <laughs> Christmas party. <laughs> and uh, that's a, a wide delivery as Lewis takes up the attack. Good catch by uh, Fernandez in the last over to dismiss Rampasad. Uh, never easy. So when you're up uh, to the wicket uh, for the spinners, you get that edge and you you got the hands right in the position to, to effect the catch. He wants a single, but it's not there. And uh, I'm not sure what Chase is thinking. Uh, but uh, really, I just get the impression that they're a little bit jittery right now. They've they lost a couple are. wickets. And uh, it's almost like if they, they didn't expect to be in this hole uh, right now. And they, and they just seem as if they, they want to get out of it, but they, they're probably going about it the wrong way. There's another delivery. Uh, keeping a little bit low again. That end, that sudden end. Uh, the ball just, is, it's a little bit too paced. Yeah, they were 44 for two, and then suddenly nine runs later. Here they are, 55 for four. 11 runs later, in fact. And that's a gift that he doesn't take advantage of. A full toss. And uh, he couldn't beat the man uh, at uh, Davis there, that extra cover position. And again, uh, just going right through him there. He was squaring up and uh, not really 
getting into line, missed everything. Luckily, he didn't get a touch. Lewis has been the outstanding bowler for Fatima this season. Four wickets he has, and just uh, averaging f uh, just about uh, 5.75 for his wickets. He is again just bang on target and uh, keeping everybody uh, on it. 55 for four at the end of 11. Yeah, they still have some options here. Uh, 55. Uh, for four, as you mentioned, they still have some options here in the bowling. They have used uh, five bowlers so far. They still have Adrian Mahes and Niall Mingo. Both of those have bowled for the season and have taken some wickets. And uh, just to do a, a quick comparison, at the end of 11, uh, Fatima were 49 for three. So presentation still ahead, uh, but they've lost that wicket more, one wicket more. And you can tell the horns are not quite as enthusiastic as they were earlier today. But the good news is that Mohammed is there and he's looking good. And uh, he certainly has, and uh, all season long, he has impressed. And here he is, just as we talk about him impressing, he plays a rather agricultural shot. And uh, they might get a second run, they no overthrow in the end. Uh, but it all started with a real ugly looking shot. We're not, we don't not often say that with Riyadh. Uh, and then all of a sudden he just decided to just get agricultural with his stroke play. Inside Missed everything. Edge, yeah. Yep. Actually it was signaled a by by the umpire. Davis again is pitching up, hitting it on the full there, Chase. This time he gets a run, they might get a second, the fumble, and uh, they take advantage of it. Uh, no no real pressure down there. All he had to do was feel the ball and return it. And, but he took his eyes off it and he, he fumbled it. They got a second run. Yeah, well, the bye before that. A slight blemish uh, in the copybook there of Fernandez, who's had four catches, three stumpings, and has been involved in three runouts. Ten dismissals to his name, or at least attached to ten dismissals for the season. That's uh, at least five more than everybody else. Right, and uh, that was a much quicker delivery there. And... Uh, but he's, he's fairly tidy. I think just sometimes he just, uh, I suppose, with young wicket keepers, they just lapse a little bit. And uh, so all their good work is tarnished. Davis, that's a quicker delivery. And uh, Chase thinking of a single. Didn't see anything of a signal there from Davis. The keeper seemed ready for it. They're usually, when the faster one's coming, the bowler tends to indicate in some way they must have some signal worked out. There is again another quicker delivery, and again, Chase is a little bit late in getting the bat down on that occasion. He got a thick inside edge and survives. So the game has really taken on a, a, a more tense feel to it. Uh, presentation trying to break free of these shackles that Fatima is just uh, tightening the screws on them and uh, that's a good shot that could relieve pressure it's going close to the boundary they're going to get two and uh, I think that's all uh, they'll get from it but that's a good shot from Chase to end the over and at the end of it 50, 60 for four uh, at, after 12. Yeah they still are ahead of uh, Fatima College at this point Extra wicket, of course, uh, in there, but it is very, very tense indeed. And as you can see, there are some of the, the officials from the secondary schools cricket at the center. The tallest man there, that's Nigel Maharaj, president of Secondary Schools Cricket League. And Dr. Hayden Furlong, uh, the general manager of Power Gen, just next to him. And Dr. Furlong is suggesting, I don't know who's going to win this one. <laughs> hey, he's saying it's tense right now. It's, uh, it's close. Could go either way. Uh, but this is the man who is sort of standing in the way of Fatima at the moment. And uh, he's played a really good hand. Well, Dr. Fulong was telling me he's not part of the cricketing Fulong family. He's from the, uh, the <laughs> central Fulongs, he said. <laughs> uh, he's more miles than Fulongs right now. And that's another bad miss because he, <laughs> he seemed to have everything covered. They're going for a second one, in fact. They were thinking about it, and uh, uh, but at the end of the day, um, Sewa was quickly into action. Yeah, you don't run to, to Sewa. He's uh, very, very fast indeed. 
uh, some members, some supporters for the Presentation College. And then you're seeing some medals there. That's the Western Wolves, Rio Claro West Secondary, still uh, very much here to support uh, Presentation College. Again, he's driving, uh, just seem a little bit relaxed driving outside the off dump there. And it, it indicates that he's kind of, he's turning the bat a little bit. He's not really pointing that elbow and trying to drive the ball through the covers. It just seemed to turn the face early. Here he is again, swinging at that one. That clearly he was heading down leg. And uh, I think the bowler should be happy that the batsman uh, got a pad on it because that could easily been a, a, by a wide. Or worse, if he had gotten some bat on that, it's yep. a big gap on the leg side. There he goes again. That's a good shot. And uh, uh, but just a one run in it. But it, it rotates the strike, and I think that is what um, Chase's rule has to be here now. Just to allow uh, Mohammed to just continue to build here. He's on 29, Chase is on 5. Presentation faithful, looking a little bit more worried now. 62 for 4, cutting, and it's going to get runs. That's 4 runs from the time it beat the man at point. It goes down to the boundary for 4. Yeah, too much width there from Lewis on offer, and that was meat and drink for a batsman of the quality of Riyad Mohammed. Look at that. Got into position beautifully. Just waited a little bit to get it past the man at backward point, and that's a nice boundary to end off the 13th over. 66 for 4 at the end of it. And that's the very latest score here at the Brian Lara Cricket Academy. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. So to welcome you back here. And uh, here's a throw. That's a loud appeal. That is very close indeed. And uh, really, and truly, they cannot believe it. Uh, but he was square in front. Leg buys is a signal unless he was struck Ooh. outside the off stump. <laughs> yeah, let's see if he did get, in fact, outside the off stump here. Ooh. Well, maybe an argument. It was moving enough to go down the leg side. But he was pinned very close to the, the crease there. So... I think we'll need Hawkeye to check on that one yep. for us. Uh, but that's a good ball from Davis. And uh, he's really battling here for his team. Fatima right there. They're just pushing for another breakthrough here. These two have been a little bit stubborn. And uh, just in the air, and uh, but just out of the reach of the bowler. Yeah, Davis, uh, well, didn't, he wasn't uh, really in any, didn't have an opportunity to get across to that one, but just holding it back just a little bit there, enough to create that chance. He does push through a couple, especially to chase. And there's a beauty, beats everybody, including the wicketkeeper, and uh, it's going to come down to the boundary. It does get into the boundary, that's four runs. A valiant effort there by Atwaru. Uh, but he couldn't keep it in. And it goes for four buys. Yeah, I don't think he could have done too much better than that. It went straight through the keeper. Maybe a little bit more bounce than he expected. And there's that Waru. He's catching up with it here. Gets his hand on it. But it hits the trailing leg and back over the ropes there. So unfortunate for him. A good bit of play. But unfortunate hitting the trailing leg. 74 for two, 72 for four rather. At this time, we're in over number 14. So they're still ahead. It was 65 for three at the end of 14 overs. Standing tall and uh, uh, playing the ball on merit. And, uh, and, and Chase, uh, while he hasn't done too much and he's, been, he's living a bit of a charmed life because what I think what he survived two Loud <laughs> BW appeals. Second one looked very close. Yep. 
And he's going right through him again. So uh, certainly is there. The coach is probably a worried man at the moment. Yeah, Rydell Ramsaran just... Uh, He's telling somebody, he's, I didn't, I didn't tell him that's how you go about it. 74, 72 for four at the end of 14. And, uh, but, but the game is really on a knife's edge at the moment and it could tilt either way. And, but again, the, the big wicket is Mohammed, uh, without any doubt at all. But it's starting to trend uh, more towards uh, Fatima now because they need 44 runs and 36 balls for a large portion of this game. It was less runs than balls, balls. Uh, balls uh, still to go. Uh, so Fatima have done a very good job of getting themselves back into this game. But you feel that uh, they really need a wicket here. And if they can get Mohammed, I think you would say that Fatima would certainly be on top of the situation at so the moment. Mingo has come into the attack now. Yeah, it's the first delivery wide outside the off them. Just one wicket uh, in the season so far for Mango. Uh, certainly Malik Lewis and Caden Mack have been the outstanding bowlers for Fatima College uh, this season. And uh, another comfortable single. And uh, it, it, you get the impression that uh, you, when you look at Mohammed, just the way he has approached his innings and uh, the way he's playing on the surface, it's almost like if he is batting on a totally different plane uh, to everybody else. He, he just seems so much more relaxed at the crease. Yeah, and, and that uh, we saw yesterday in that North-South Classic. Looked very good for his 21 before he got dismissed. And here's another one goes right through Chase. And uh, you, you get the impression that Chase probably doesn't like this rule where he has to defend uh, uh, he probably felt that he just needed to go there and throw the bat at anything and take what he gets. Maybe that might be his way out of danger here. And this time he's driving powerfully, but that's good cricket. And he has to hurry. The return, though, is not a good one once more. Uh, so Fatima must say they've had chances, uh, probably affecting a run out or two, but they just haven't been able to finish the job. Yeah, and I think Mohammed is suggesting to Chase that I heard no call. You didn't call me at all. You just started running. <laughs> and uh, he is a little bit unsettled here, Mohammed. I think he really needed to take a few extra seconds to gather himself. Chase probably said, but I call you DG. There's his sweep in. There's a lot of people for out. Wow, wow, wow. They brought him on and he's gotten the breakthrough for them. He produced some runs with the bat. Mango, and now he's picked up the prize wicket that of Riyad Mohammed. He goes, and that it is 75 for five now. What a breakthrough that is! Yeah, that was uh, pretty much. And, and look at it, he's playing, a, he's uh, trying to sweep this one, and uh, that's halfway up the pad in front of the middle stump. Easy decision there. Well, yeah, look at it once again. This one is not down the leg side, it's straight up the middle. And he just tried to play across the line of it, and he knew he was out immediately. And I told you, just before that, Ruskin, that close run-out situation, he certainly did look unsettled. And I really felt that he should have taken just a little bit more time uh, to relax there uh, before that. It looks like he's carrying some kind of a, a little niggle because he's dragging that left foot. Um, uh, so it, maybe he might have just the, the speed at which he had to run that single. It just didn't seem to, to favor him at all. 33 from 40. Yeah, just, just a little extra moment. Gather your thoughts and uh, play the next delivery on merit. And certainly he didn't do that on that occasion. He's done it all the way through the afternoon. And now he's left his team uh, with a huge, well, with a mountain to climb here, really. Because with five wickets down and still 41 needed of 32 balls, they would have needed him. He is the, the type of batsman who can accelerate quickly. Now with two batsmen there fairly new at the crease, well, Chase has been there for 20 balls, but he hasn't been scoring uh, quite fluently. It's going to be very difficult now for Presentation College. Well, the, and, and, and the, but that's the other question I was just about to ask you, uh, Vid, in terms of their lower order, their middle to lower order, how prolific have they been throughout the season? Well, they haven't got much of a chance because <laughs> That's presentation what that, that has is been always, able to, to knock yeah, off the runs early. Yep. That is, and that is always the story, isn't it? Uh, all the runs scored by a few at the top, and then the ones below don't get a chance. 
And uh, the first delivery, uh, Mango just kind of teasing him uh, just outside that off them, but Racha uh, not fooled by it. Well, just to develop on that, uh, the two top scorers coming into this game were Ramsaran with 50 runs for the, the tournament and Riyad Mohammed for four, with 42. And that's a good shot, uh, but he hit it straight back to the ball at the end. Uh, successful over by the man Mingo. And at the end of it is 75 for 5 after 15. Well, as you were talking about uh, the, the remainder of the scores, after Riyad Mohammed, Brendan Budu has 22 runs. He added uh, two, three more today. Christian Rampasad, 16 for the season. Khalid Mohammed 11 for the season and Aiden Racha 11. So that's that just tells you the top order has been doing the business for presentation and Fatima would have been well aware of that. They knew once they got through uh, the top order batsmen including Riyad Mohammed in this T20 competition, well, uh, they would have a genuine chance now of uh, getting the, their hands on the trophy. And uh, you, you know, when, when, we, when we saw the first innings, the, the lower the bowlers, because he used what, nine bowlers? He used almost, yes, eight, eight bowlers, eight bowlers and, in yeah. all. The, all of the, the lower order bowlers from, say, after Chase, were all spinners. And they basically pace off and they just kind of, they give the batsmen no momentum at all, nothing to work with. You had to apply the pace on it. Fatima is probably following in a similar vein as well and forcing the presentation batsmen now to have to make their runs. You, you, they're not giving you anything. So you now have to uh, apply whatever pace and, and power uh, you want on the ball. And right now it's proven to be a little bit difficult for them. Well, but he's to start off his, uh, in his spell here. And uh, right on target, but a nice comfortable single. Chase. Well, Mahes just has the, the one run for the uh, one one wicket for the season so far, one for 18, his uh, best figures. Uh, so, but uh, he has uh, not been exactly one of the more economical bowlers for the season uh, for Fatima College. Well, they they are certainly trying to mix it up here uh, quite a bit. This is the he's a seventh bowler uh, so far. So. Um, it's interesting, this approach. Here's a shot, brilliantly played as four runs. He just rolled up there, Racha, and uh, he barely moved. I don't know why he ran. He, he spoiled the whole sequence by running. But that was a brute of a cover drive, Clive Lloyd-like. Wow, that was, that was powerful. Once it got past that uh, field at mid-off, Longhoff had no chance at all. That just flew to the boundary. And, uh, and and that's that that kind of like uh, that just relaxes the dressing room now, you know, because uh, they're saying if Racha could do it, well, maybe we could do it too, or he could get the job done for us. He goes again, and he just got an inside edge, and just eludes the wicket keeper. Goes for four more, or does it? it was yes, it does. It touched the rope. It, it was rolling. It it hit the rope and was rolling alongside the rope. I that should be four runs. So we'll see if it goes. Cut the inside edge. It went down. To the keeper's defense and the umpire does signal four. Uh, there it is. It clearly hit the rope there. And look at that. The rope has been pulled back. Yeah, that's off what where it is. It I think the rope was, was kind of pushed back a little bit. So they need 36 runs from 28 deliveries. Well, in T20 cricket, as they say, every ball is an event. And certainly those two last events have tilted it again towards Presentation College here. Uh, would you believe it? Chase faced 21 ball, he's on 7, Racha faced 4, and he's on 8. Looking for more here, he's going to get some more runs, and that's 4 more. So he has come in here and just changed the complexion totally. Well, the man from Rio Claro, he has all the luck going his way. Three consecutive boundaries here, exactly what Presentation College uh, did. Uh, earlier today, Ruskin, when uh, the... Rio Claro West, he's from Rio Claro, of course. When they won the, uh, the match, he was the one running out he onto the field. Cheerleader. Yeah, he was the cheer <laughs> cheerleader. I think he's gotten a lot of that in his blood now. That's his, that's his dad there waving the flag. Boy, I'm sure he enjoyed that. And his sister also there. Well, he's probably saying, that's a racha, you know. That's a racha. <laughs> Playing out a proud moment indeed for him and the entire family. 
and all of Rio Claro. And he goes again, and that's four more. Well, he has just turned this game on its head right now. In four deliveries, he has just completely changed the script. Well, come at the hour, come at the man, and Ratcha. Full toss on the leg side and four. Wow, he's picked up 16 runs of six deliveries. What an introduction, and Riyad Mohammed loves it. And uh, what is, that's part of the reason why I was asking you, what is and how many overs and how successful has Mahesh been all season long? And uh, you said he had one wicket to his name. Yeah, so one I was wicket up, to his and name. I, and my follow-up question to you was, why is he bowling at this time? Yeah. If he has only taken one wicket, and you have, the, he is your seventh bowler, being your means a lot of these bowlers here still have overs in reserve. That's right, and he's averaging 47 runs for the season for that one wicket. Well, I, I shudder to think how many overs he actually bowled to concede that many runs. And uh, he's going to get at least a single here. He might get a couple more. If not, another boundary. That's five in a row. Wow. That is remarkable. Five in a row. And this over could go down in history here for Presentation College. Look at that. Ratcher almost with a strike rate of 300 at the moment. 20 of seven. And uh, he has just made it look so easy. 16 overs completed. 96 now for five and the equation the whole pendulum now has swung right back to presentation they'll take a water break we'll take a break here and then Vinod is going to come back to wrap up proceedings here presentation in the driver's seat once again they are 96 for five they need 20 runs from 24 balls we'll be right back this broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited, industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery this broadcast is brought to you by precision cataract surgery limited industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery refractive surgery including lasik minimally invasive glaucoma surgery pterygium and graft surgery laser treatment for glaucoma diabetic eye disease customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery this broadcast is brought to you by precision cataract surgery limited industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery refractive surgery including lasik minimally invasive glaucoma surgery pterygium and graft surgery laser treatment for glaucoma diabetic eye disease customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery We're back here and the presentation college starting the celebration after that over that yielded 21 runs. So joining me is Anil Lachan. Anil, that over has really put them in the driver's seat. Sensible batting will now take them over the mark. Yeah, presentation college uh, via Aidan Ratcher really turning the screws here, hitting five running fours. And I must admit, uh, Fatima College has gotten it wrong on that occasion. Yeah, I think Mahis was not the man to use. Racha, 20 of 7. Ricardo Chi, 7 of 21. Still Nikhail Jalim to come, so they have batting. Oh, 
Well, this one that just going the other way and the shaving just passing the outside edge. So it's pandemonium amongst the, the presentation college fans there on the right of us at the yeah, northwestern the stand. There's Niall Mingo to continue. He'll be looking to produce a piece of magic here for Fatima College. Whipped away by Chase. There's a chance here for a run out. And not out, says the umpire. Adrian Racha has long legs, so he's able to reach up there very quickly. Yeah, Ricardo Chase taking off immediately on impact there. But the rhythm section from Presentation College has gone to the next level in the stands, uh, Vinod. They're yeah. really hamming out the, those tunes well, out in the stands. Racha and Cheese. Chase is an experienced man. He's an old fox, Chase. He's been around for quite a while. Racha is a new kid on the block. There's Mingo. Uh, looking to cut there. Racha not making contact. So Racha, Aidan Racha, just needs to be a bit more composed now, having done the bulk of the work to tip the scale in favor of Presentation College. So Presentation College, San Fernando marching here. Less a wicket or two can fall. Driving is Racha, hitting it very hard. So Mingo keeping it tidy. Nineteen to get twenty deliveries in which to get it. This time he's hiking this away, down through mid wicket. Takes one, that's all he'll get. It's Mingo just pulling on that delivery. Racha in a no nonsense mood here at the Brian La Cricket Academy. Rocks under the back foot. And you can see the fans there. Rio Claro fans, they're supporting Racha. So here is Niall Mingo. And again, driving. Spectators catch. Yeah, Ricardo Chase getting a half volley there, but not being able to put it away. And he will need to keep uh, helping uh, the likes of Racha. Well, not a bad over by Mingo. And over that yielded just two runs. So it's 95 for eight. 18 of 18. He has brought it on to a runner ball. And a good over here. We could still see some excitement. Well, I'm sure Presentation College will not want to be uh, getting more than five runs in the final over. Well, um, men are claiming Eden Racha tonight. The president of the Trial of Cricket Board says that Racha plays for his club. President's Associates in St. Mary's Village, Maruka. My you, word, my word. Uh, you would like to coach there, Anil? The president's pulling out all the stops here tonight. So it's going to be Siwa. If Siwa can bowl a good over here, there's still something in it for, for Fatima. It's a runner ball required here at the moment. Well, uh... Zachary Sewer might be very well advised to possibly get his cutters uh, going in this over. A change of pace may just bring about a, re uh, a wicket here. Well, there is the presentation college posse. Siwa. That's a good start. So it's obvious Siwa is going to go full and wide. And this is why Third Man is right back. And Eden Ratcher, he would, wouldn't want to take it into the final over. He will try as best as possible to get as close as possible to the total in the, the next two overs. Let's see what from the fire. And this is cracked away, down to backward point. That's four. That shot, I think, will be the difference. So it's the Aiden Ratcher show here at the Brian Cricket Academy. Really pulling out the stops here. Slicing that ball through backward point and it raced across this lush Brian Lara Cricket Academy outfield. Into the boundary it goes. And that brings up the 100 for Presentation College. They are now very well placed at 102 for 5 and 17.2 overs. Yeah, so it's 102 for 5. And the Racha 
It's the Rasha show here at the moment. Here he is. Round the wicket. See what struck down the ground. They get one. So the engines have started to travel to Rio Claro here, Vinod. The engines, you say? Yeah, the train engines. There's about 10 maxis uh, waiting to get started in the, in the car park. Well, uh, let's hope the president of the Trian Bureau Cricket Board as ambassador gets a lift. So he lives in that area. So what a talent this young man is, Adrian Ratcher. Well, Ricardo Chase, a man also from Rio Claro, as well bowled by Siwa. Chase has been sensible today. Eight of 24. Well, I must admit, Ricardo Chase, having pulled a hamstring yesterday, he made a, a miraculous uh, uh, recovery within the 24 hours from yesterday's encounter against North. And how much he would want to really uh, be there at the end, you know, to hit the winning, to hit the winning runs. And see you again, slow delivery, driving his Ratcha through the offside and again. Poor bit of fielding there by the captain himself, Davis. So and I think Davis attacked that, thinking he would have had a chance at the run out and just took his eyes off the ball at the final moment. Well, what was Ricardo uh, Chase doing? Uh, he was called uh, true for the run and he was ball watching. He was caught ball watching when he should be just trying to get down to the other end. The Ratcher's dad seems to be sending a message. Yeah, I see why balls are chase, whipped away. Gets one, so it's now 106. 10 runs to get in the final two overs. Where's your money, Anil? In the First Citizens Bank, the Government Bank. Very good. So, a quick look at the bowling. Ram Dean, down for 20 in three. Well, uh, the bowling card has gone somewhere. Well, skipper Joshua Davis. Does he bring himself on now or give himself the opportunity to bowl in the final over of this game? Uh, in, in a situation like this, the penultimate over is really the key over. So, he has to come now. Seems as if Niall Mingo is going to bowl. So skipper Joshua Davis is prepared to defend whatever is left in the last over. Ten to get in two. The Premiership Champions Presentation College on the brink of adding the T20 title to that. And they'll be going for the trifecta when the KFC Golden Cup starts. So... Uh, presentation college they're having a purple season this year the secondary schools league here's the pensive look of coach Ricard, uh, Miguel Patti but one would think that uh, Ricardo Chis he would want to try and get as much as possible in the uh, penitent over uh, here Vinod yeah well at the end of the day there are wickets in hand as well but he's batted sensibly. He's just looking to turn the strike over here now to, to Ratcha. He's down the track. He whips this one nicely. They take one. And that they're going to go back for two. The fielder on that occasion was too slow in attacking the ball. And he allowed the batsman to go back for two. So excellent aggressive running from both Ricardo Chase and uh, Adrian Ratcha. Just seven away from victory. Eight, my apology. Driving nicely this time is Chase. Takes one. Sensible batting here by Ricardo Chase. But how does Aiden Ratcha approach uh, this final three deliveries uh, from this main got, uh, main got over? Is he going to try and be a hero or is he going to continue? Uh, to to uh, chip away at the singles winner. Well, Ratcha seems to, to play one way and one way only, which is to go after the bowling. And with wickets in hand, he might well do that. Chase, on the other hand, is just keeping a calm head. They needed five in this over. They've gotten three. But you don't want to go down to the final over requiring too many runs. So presentation college is getting closer and closer uh, to this Fatima total. 
Six needed from. Six runs needed from eight deliveries. And you can see Carlisle Jalim wearing a pleased look on his face. Also with them there, the man who brought them into Premiership cricket, Tariq Mohammed, in the and green what, cap. And what a proud moment it would be for Tariq Mohammed. That's one more. And they're really making it look very, very in easy indeed at this stage here, uh, here Vinod. Well, they've gotten the five that's required in this over. Not a bad over at all by Niall Mingo. Well, the president of China Bay Cricket Board immediately reaches downstairs. The guy was standing just behind us. It's like Flash. I told you, the engines have started. Possibly took that fast train downstairs. Here's Mingo now to Racha. Driving down to backward point. And uh, the return not collected there by Fernandez. It's the end of the over. We go into the final over with four runs required and uh, a target of 115. It has been interesting. Uh, Fatima College, I think, will rule the fact that they had six wickets in hand after 20 overs were bowled, which meant that they could have pulled the trigger a bit earlier. Agreed, Vinod. And all it takes is one over to transform the the total complexion of any uh, T20 game and we've seen that Racha you know taking that bold approach and I must admit that has definitely worked for him he's brought a presentation college now on the brink of victory and more importantly you know take keeping that so uh, that silverware in south so presentation college who's that guy uh, some of uh, the fans are in the dog out with them. Even that Prima College man. That's a serious man. That's a CEO <laughs> of the 360 company. So four runs required of six balls. And the Presentation College, they are one hit away from becoming the 2023 Power Gen Intercol champions. And the man who's on strike is Eden Racha, who I tell you will be looking to hit that winning round his dad is on his feet would you be would you be root, root, uh, rooting for him to be the man of the match uh, uh, in this effort well it has been a great effort from him he actually took the game away from Fatima with this innings I see why not driving through the offside dunk to cover pressure here bit of a fumble they take one Three required now. And that ball was hit like a rocket out to extra cover. The fielder there doing an extremely good job in defending that ball. Well, Ricardo Chase is limping at the moment. Three, three runs required from five deliveries. Here's Davis. Quicker delivery. Laura people like before, not out, says the umpire. Let's have a look at that again. And he's, he's having a word there with Chase. Let's have a look. Well, I tell you, that looked plum. Your thoughts on it? Well, if that doesn't give him out LBW, then I don't know what is going to be given out LBW. Yep. You could feel it there for Davis. That was plumb in front. Now the scores are tied. Could they go back for the winning run here? In fact, now the scores are tied. No, they've won it. Presentation College are the champions. The 2020 champions of the Pogen Intercol 2023 series. And the congratulations to Presentation College. They go back for two. And uh, they, they formalized the victory, 116 for five. Congrats to Presentation College. They've been wonderful. Yeah, many congratulations to Presentation College. The man of the moment, Adrian Ratcha, taking Presentation College from the jaws of defeat and giving them the opportunity to keep the silverware in South. 
What a performance. And what a performance by Presentation College. And I'm sure all of Coffee Street in San Fernando, they're very proud of this team. It has been a team that has worked very, very hard this season. And uh, congratulations to Presentation College. The fans are with them celebrating now a wonderful victory by a very hard-working unit. And just reward for hard work you know, for the entire season. It has been a very long season, Vinod, but this Presentation College outfit, they have, they have withstand all challenges that has come their way. And in every occasion, they have been victorious. So many congratulations, not only to the players, but to the coach, uh, Ryder Ram, uh, Ram Saran, and his entire team for doing a tremendous job with this presentation college outfit. Yeah, word on Carlisle Jalim. He's walking out there, number 50 on his back. I think that's his age. And uh, he has worked very hard uh, putting things together at presentation college. Guys like Shamir Mohammed, and we can't forget the captain, uh, Nikhail Jalim who has led admirably uh, this time around. And there's an Aprima College student, Eden, going across to celebrate his, his, with his friends from Presentation College. Uh, the ramps around, you can see there as well. It has been a wonderful effort by Presentation College. They are the Intercol champions of 2023. But take nothing away, it has been a terrific game of cricket. It's been back and forth during the course of this encounter. But Presentation College, all credit to them, they held their nerve well at the back end of this innings. And Aiden Ratchet, your beauty, you've really produced one of those scintillating innings just when required. And we thought that with the dismissal of Riyadh Mohammed, that would definitely have put a damper in the Presentation uh, dugout. But out came Aiden Ratchet and transformed this run chase into his own. Uh, good knock by Racha, hitting uh, those five fours in that. Just imagine, had Mahes not given up five fours in that one over, how different the outcome could have been here for Fatima College. Yeah, and it just proves, uh, Vinod, one indecision or one decision that you make that doesn't go right, and it just goes the other way. And, you know, it's tough uh, for this Fatima outfit to, to really uh, stomach this defeat having really worked themselves back into this contest, having not really scored, you know... Well, Amir, right. Amir Jango, the national player, former Fatima College boy, just consoling some of the players there. And you can see Mahis, he is uh, really, he has really broken down. But that is how it is in sport. He, he would not have gone out there to deliberately give away five fours. And he has to use it as a learning experience, as a growth. Uh, it's a bit of a growth experience as well and uh, though, there you can see the beautiful trophies so let's take a short break when we come back we will have the presentation ceremony for you this broadcast is brought to you by precision cataract surgery limited industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery refractive surgery including lasik minimally invasive glaucoma surgery teragium and graft surgery laser treatment for glaucoma diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited, industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, teragium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited, industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, teragium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, 
minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, pterygium and graft surgery, laser treatment for glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, customized cataract surgery to correct astigmatism and presbyopia using multifocal lens implants and bladeless femto second laser assisted cataract surgery. This broadcast is brought to you by Precision Cataract Surgery Limited. Industry leaders in precision laser cataract surgery, refractive surgery including LASIK, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery.
President of PTC and Vice President of Senior Guy, Mr. Ashley Asher, Mr. Prasha Ali, Corporate Communication Officer. And at this time, I'm going to be fine. The umpire should come forward. The umpire should stay in the field. The umpire should stay in the field. Mr. Steve Lara, Avigay, Avigay, and Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Buster. I know you are excited to be here with you on the board. Start to win the World Strong of the Day. And the first time to win the World Strong of the Day. Here's your question on the right here. So, that is, the top of the day is the team. And Mr. Buster, I'm going to start to win the World Strong of the Day. The best school of the day. The color of the day is super good for you. The color of the day is super good for you. The color of the day is super good for you. And the one of the day is super good for you. Again, as you say, who is your side to side? Who is your side to side? Who is your side to side?
Thank you. 